while we're just getting ready, I, I, I did want to talk a bit about this, uh, but I didn't get a chance. Um, I just the party that we have is not very tough. Um, and I designed this uh, adventure kind of agnostic of whoever is playing it. Um, so I'm not out to kill your characters. I will say that um, there are situations that might be perilous or deadly to them if they don't, if they don't act, uh, if they don't take them seriously. Uh, and apologies in advance if anyone's character dies. That's not what I'm going for. But, um, you know, we have a pacifist and we have someone with an armor class of nine uh, and we have a monk. So a squishy party, a squishy party. So apologies in advance. Total if I party kill. kill. Total party Could kill. I, I've never killed a character. Hug all kill. the monsters. Hug all the monsters. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm leaving this in because it's nice and tense for the start of the podcast. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's what we call foreshadowing in the biz. <laughs> Ah, the biz. Oh. Yeah. Little um, do they know that by the dun, end of dun, the adventure. <laughs> is everyone recording then? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and go gentle. This is my first time. Okay. Ah. Without further ado, welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a standalone Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Each episode is a separate, complete adventure, so you can listen to them in any order. For this adventure, we are joined by. Dr. Crud the Third. Hello. Dr. Crud the Third is a third level Loxodon cleric. He stands eight feet tall, five feet wide. He wears blue jeans, a white button down shirt with a red tie, and a white lab coat with Dr. Crud the Third uh, embroidered on the left side of his chest. And next up, we have Tangible Dreams. Hello, how you doing? It's so good to be here. I just love the opportunity. And I'm short. A lot of people make fun of me for that, but I have lovely hair and people can't take their eyes off of me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, kind of like I feel about some people here. Hmm. <laughs> and last but not least, Olive Mudo. <laughs> Olive is a person height crocodile standing on two legs like she's people because she is. She's wearing a Jedi-style white robe. Uh, we decided it was called a battle sarong <laughs> last adventure. <laughs> and she's a level three monk. You find yourselves in the Firebreathing Kittens Guild Hall. The guild is a large building, and on the ground floor is a bar and lounge area with wooden tables and chairs. Taking pride of place on one wall is a corkboard covered in job flyers. Today, however, it seems that something is amiss in the guild hall. The common area is buzzing with commotion. A rabble of adventurers surrounds Callow Coppercoil, the guild's resident apothecary and potion consultant, all of them complaining loudly. So you look over and you just see surrounding your apothecary um, just a load of adventurers, some that you know, some that you don't, and they're all complaining about defective potions. You see uh, Wood Elf Druid Keelan, she's distraught. She quaffed a potion of healing and it worked a little too well and healed off her sacred back tattoo. Uh, <laughs> You see Nezgrax, the dragonborn wizard, who some of you may have adventured with before, and he took a, a potion of giant strength, which worked, again, a little too well, and he can't stop destroying things. Every time he turns around and brushes off something, it smashes to pieces or gets flung across the, the guild hall. Uh, you see Tanager, the satyr, uh, he evidently has had a potion of spider climb, and now everything he touches is sticking to his appendages, most notably a wide array of different undergarments of all shapes, sizes, and materials. Some of them are heavily soiled with unidentifiable fluids. You, you, you try not to speculate as to their origin. <laughs> so what would you like to do? <laughs> Uh, as 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 you as you can't help but pay attention to this, you see Callow Coppercoil, the the apothecary, and she is having a terrible day. And she's like, I'm 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 terribly sorry. I'm so sorry. Look, we've been having problems with our supply chain, and I'm doing my best to uh, to reverse all these potion effects, but they've affected nearly everybody in the guild. And I look, I will I will send somebody to Nimbin to investigate. But at the moment, everybody's indisposed. Have we got any adventurers here today who are are not in firm? Have we any? Any adventurers are both sound body and mind. Well, I'm a little soft, but I could go for you if you know what I mean. I could do that. Yeah. You, you, you're ready to take an adventure. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay. It's, I mean, it's, it's relatively low level. It's just an, an administrative thing. It should be easy enough, but we just need to send up an envoy into the mountains by train. Oh, I've always wanted to be an envoy. This is such an opportunity for me. I've been thinking about going up there my entire life. This is my first job. I'm very excited about this opportunity. 
Oh, this I've is been doing scud work around here most of the time. So this is lovely. And potion makers are very sweet. You know what I mean? Yes, indeed. These, these particular potion made, uh, uh, makers are gnomish. It's a gnomish village. Um, and they're terribly nice fellows. Uh, I've met them at conferences in the past. Um, two two com- competing potion makers, actually. But I don't... I, something, something has gone terribly amiss. The potions... At first, they were just of poor quality. Then the, the the supply dried up, and then they were of worse quality. And it's it's I mean yes, it's it's a whole it's a whole kerfuffle. Let me see if I understand this right. You're saying they're gnomes? Yes, yes. I'm a gnome. Oh yeah, well you I should be able to tell that by looking at my brown wood like skin, and my piercing brown eyes that can't stop staring at you, and my long brown flowing hair. Yes, all all very typical uh, gnomish features. Um, I I fear though. I'm, I'm sorry. What was your name? Tangible. Tangible. Very, very nice to meet you. I'm Callow Coppercoil, as you know, of course. I I. If this is your first adventure, I think you should take one or two more companions with you. I mean, it's just a. It is kind of it was just scud work. You refer to it as. Oh, yeah, scud work. That's how you get started. Everybody's got to go through it. It's like a subway in New York City, if there was such a place. Yes, yes, but just for safety reasons, for insurance, um, you, you shouldn't go alone. No, well, I understand. Well, let's look around. Well, you're free, right? Couldn't you come with me? <laughs> I, unfortunately, shall be working all through the weekend uh, trying to reverse some of these po- Yes, I, I'll be with you in one moment. I, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, he's, you, you look over and you see uh, Landis, the half-elf cleric, is, is floating about and kind of st- like stuck to the ceiling like a balloon. <laughs> Uh, being held onto by a rope by rain cloud moon glow. He's like, I'm doing my best. Would you just hold still? <laughs> yes, I, I, I fear that Landis has, has taken some sort of flying potion um, that, again, has not worn off. Um, I really have my work cut out for me. If, look, we, also, I, I'm sure we can organize payment when you come back. I just, I really should, I really should go about my business. Yes. I would love an opportunity to take a potion with me. Just something wild and random. Who knows what could happen? It could be so fun on the trip. And then I could demonstrate to the gnomes how things are messed up. Isn't this a good way to do it? <sighs> who, who am I to stand in the way of the whims of a, a fresh-faced green adventurer? I, look, I have plenty of potions that I don't know what they do, but I, the, the plan is to destroy them. How about this one right here? Can I take this one right uh, here, this one? Yeah. Just tell me what that one is and I'll take it. It's all up to you. I'm totally fine with that. If you don't want me to have that one, I'll take the purple one next to it. Oh, uh, look, okay, you can take the purple one. I think, I think this is a healing potion of some sort. I don't know why it's purple. I, this is, this is, look, I didn't give you this, okay? This is irresponsible. I didn't give you this. Sure, sure. You didn't give it to me. I stole it. Ooh, yes, I stole it. I love that idea. Look at that idea. I stole it. Okay, well, I will. Oh, Ooh. there's. Uh, 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 excuse me, Olive. Olive, can I can I bend your ear for a moment, please? <clears throat> Olive sets down her glass of chicken blood on the bar, and uh, stops smiling her crocodile smile. She just couldn't help. Puts on a serious face but still is laughing at Landis on the ceiling. And then heads over. <laughs> Olive, good to see you. One thing I'll say about you, Olive, it's very difficult to read your emotions, given your crocodilian appearance, but but you look like you're up for a mission, and um, I, I might need you to accompany Tangible here up into the up into the mountains, up into... The, you've heard of Nimbin, the, the, the potion village up in the mountains. Sure. <laughs> Everyone has. I, I don't want to just go with Tangible, though. Is there a third person? I wonder, what is Dr. Crud the Third doing today? He's a cleric. He'll be useful if we get injured. Well, well, I just finished delivering a litter from this tabaxi. I, I gotta say, eight kittens, six girls, two boys, and she's keeping the runt. I convinced her to keep the runt. How kind of you. You're such a good doctor. And you have just the right amount of blood on your coat so people know you're <laughs> know you're a physician. <laughs> There's a little bit more now, but, uh, you know, I may need a wash in here soon just so they think I'm a good physician and not, you know, a mass murderer. <laughs> just the right amount. Tangible, is it okay if Dr. Crud III joins us? 
What? Yeah, yes, yes, of course, of course. Yes, yes. Big elephant fellow. Now, uh, please, if you'll take my leave. Okay, so sweetie, just... Sweetie, to... sweetie, sweetie, calm down. She was asking me. It's okay. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I know having... you're a little flustered. You're having a kerfuffle of a day. I, I see am. that. You just breathe, okay? Mm. We're going to take care of this oh. for you. If only I had some calming potions that were not tainted. I... Oh. I, really... I got this purple one. Maybe it'll heal you. Oh, maybe, maybe it'll make your one. beard no, grow or no, something stop. fun. No, no, please. No, I don't. I don't want a beard. I'm ugh. could be an aphrodisiac. You never know. OK, this is this is getting borderline, borderline inappropriate. But I can't say I can't pretend I'm not enjoying it. But no. Uh, OK, I'm flustered. Please. Uh, let, let's just recap. I need you to travel to Nimbin. It's about 400 miles west. You want to get on the G train. Um, I, I, I think I can probably drum up about 300 gold pieces uh, from the from petty cash for you for this. Um, all I need is just a comprehensive report on the, the situation. Uh, do we need to change potion supplier? Um, do we need to send reinforcements to some sort of civil unrest foot that we haven't heard about? Um, so hopefully I can leave this in your capable hands. Of course. Since you are giving away potions, uh, I'm going to grab one too. All right. <laughs> I'm I'm going to look this way, and <laughs> I'm not going to count how many potions are sitting on my desk. All right. Well, you just keep looking that mm -hmm. way, and, and when he when he turns back around, there's no more potions sitting there. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you roll a d4 for me, please? <laughs> and add one to the result. All righty. Give me one second. So that's five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've got five random potions. Uh, I better make a note of that. <laughs> yeah, and one purple potion. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Crowd has five. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to do or say before you set upon your journey? Okay. Does well, guys, my carriage is right outside. We're, we can go ahead and load it up. We'll go over to the train station. We'll put it in the uh, on the freight car. So... Make sure we have that because I have a full hospital in there. You're, believe me, you're gonna enjoy that if you uh, if you get hurt. Yeah, I got 18 beds. <laughs> That's why I'm glad you're here, Doctor Crud the Third. Always good to have a cleric in the mission. Yeah, but, and in addition, to that I also got a full laboratory as well. Remember when I made those uh, those anti Wolfenstein, whatever the heck they're called potions i forget now yeah the shape-shifting potions i still have yeah. one of those as anti-shift darts yeah you're so handy oh you 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 dabble yourself uh dr crud oh yeah yeah i do i had no idea we 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 must um we must lunch in some time and discuss our, our shared passion all right well i don't have a cafe in there so we're gonna have to go find someplace else well, that's that's quite all right i know a very quaint little place downtown um i'm also uh, a little less um uh reluctant to 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 let you run away with uh, these random potions because you know a, a, a man trained like you um probably knows what he's doing i hope what random potions <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes yes okay okay safe hands safe hands indeed Okay, so uh, you make your way towards the train station in uh, Dr. Crud's carriage. Um, I presume you've, uh, you've loaded up uh, the carriage into the freight compartment before. Does that, would that mean that you know what the prices are for this? Ten gold. Ten gold, okay. Uh, well, um, yeah, you have a, a brief interaction with your, um, with your train conductor, who doesn't seem um, really into the idea at first, but uh, yeah, without much hassle, you get your entire uh, ambulance onto the, the freight, uh, freight carriage of this train. Uh, you pay your one gold a piece, yes. Correction, that is not an ambulance, it's the mobile free clinic, thank you very much. Okay, okay, the mobile free clinic. Um, yeah, and your train journey starts. It's a long, long journey. Um, it's, it takes uh, most of the day. Um, at first, the train is 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 um, pretty full. You manage to get a, a four seater to yourself, selves. Um, but yeah, it's pretty full. And as 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 the hours and the stations roll by, more and more people leave the train until you find that you're the very last people on the train. It's a little bit eerie. Um, it's dark outside now, and the last uh, hour or so has all been uphill um, as you ascend into the mountains. Um, uh, you start to see snow uh, on the ground around you, where it's where it's still bright enough to see from the 
from the light shone out of the, the quaint old wooden, rickety wooden steam train. Um, and finally, the train pulls to a stop, and you realize it's the final stop. As the train driver puts her head out, she says, Last stop! Everybody off, please! All right, thank you very much, nice lady. And um, do me a favor and be be careful out there, will you? It's not, not safe around these parts. It's all right, I'm a doctor. All right, well, you know, just uh, keep your keep your keep your sword at the ready is all I'll say. Goblins everywhere. I was supposed to bring a sword? Oh, nobody <laughs> told me that. I didn't bring a sword at all. As a monk and a wizard and a cleric, we look completely unarmed. We'll be fine, I say to the train conductor. Are you three completely unarmed? Walking yeah. through the, the mountain passes to Nimbin. Yeah, I don't believe in weapons. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. I, I, look, I, I'm just a train driver. Not my place to say, but um, hopefully I'll see you for the return journey. We'll see you then. Oh, I guarantee it. Oh, I got testicle left here and testicle right, and they're ready to do some damage. I'm just saying, I'm there for you. <laughs> you named your fists. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's right, the testicle, a no notoriously tough part of the body. <laughs> Those goblins won't stand a chance. That's where I hit them, not where I make them get hit from. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm well. I'm sure, that's just where I see them. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, maybe, you know, it might be worth workshopping the, oh, yeah, you're speed bagging. Okay, no, I can, I can appreciate that. All right. I'm not an owner of a pair of testicles myself, but that looks pretty painful. <laughs> anyway, I best be off. <laughs> true, true. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so uh, uh, you get off the train, and um, it's very clearly the last stop, and there is one sign um, pointing towards Nimbin, N-I-M-B-I-N. That's where we're going. Um, that is where you're going, yeah. Well, I gotta say, that was the most talkative train driver I've ever seen or heard from. I mean, they've never said stuff to us before. I think they thought we were gonna die. <laughs> you, you know what? They might, but they they might also be the bad guy, so we gotta keep that in mind. You're so suspicious, Dr. Crud the Third. It's like, as a person who regularly pulls knives out of people's backs, you expect <laughs> double-crossing. <laughs> Well, yeah, and but it does make it help when the, the knife actually has the person's name on it <laughs> that, that, that did the stabbing. That was useful. <laughs> it was. And they got what was coming to them. And th at least one night in jail. I think they got away, though. Anyway, okay. We'll try to catch yeah. them this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so is it, like, really dark out? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's nighttime. Fully nighttime oh, no. now. Your carriage is driven by horses, right? Yes, it's uh, Uber and Lyft. Okay, and they don't have dark vision, right? Well, the horses are probably not. Probably not. But my carriage does have lanterns for night riding. Oh. Now, how long have you had these animals enslaved for this work purpose that you make them do? Well, we've had them for about three years now, but I have given them the option to go. But they lack my payment. I don't. I do pay them, and they're they're not enslaved. They have the option to go ahead, go. But uh, for some reason, they like coming back to the oats and barley. Oh, I can't blame them. I love oats and barley if it if it's mixed together in the right proportions and fermented for the right length of time. <laughs> well, what what uh, what what is the uh, the measurements you want? I got. I I can give you a feed bag. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a dear. I love it. Aww. Well, we'll consider that later. I got this purple potion I'm hanging on to right now, and we'll see where that takes me if I uh, if I want to go anywhere, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I got five of them, and they're all different colors. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> DM evil chuckle. <laughs> Mix and match. Miscability, miscability, miscability. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I do not have a D100 table for miscability, so uh <laughs> be some heavy I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well. When I was a kid and playing D&D in the first var variations, I was like, "Oh, I have to drink two potions someday to see what happens." <laughs> I believe there are variant rules somewhere, but I am not familiar with them. I can I can I can make them up. You're too young. That's all it is. You're just too young and handsome and bearded. <laughs> 
You're going to have to because all six of them are getting drunk. <laughs> I believe this to be true. We're just foreshadowing here. We're just foreshadowing. Okay, uh, the wind picks up and uh, the snow starts falling a little heavier as you huddle, huddle around this, this carriage just outside the train station. Um, all right, well, the, all right, guys, well, get inside. It's, it's going to be nice and warm in there and, and we'll, we'll get it going. Yeah, wearing my half robe Jedi style outfit, I definitely want to get inside the carriage. I'm also a crocodile and we don't take very well to cold. Now, sweetie, what's your name again? I get so confused sometimes. There were so many names in the beginning. I'm Olive. I reach out a hand. It's kind of like clawed, scaly, and green. And I shake yours. Olive, Olive, Olive. Listen, I got some moisturizer. Maybe we could talk later and we could see about a nice skincare regimen for you. That would be wonderful. When I'm out of the water for too long, I just get so dry. We can't have that, honey. We can't have that. And the snow is not going to make it look any better for you. Yeah, I just want to roll in that mud over there. Oh, okay. Let's go inside. Oh, well, sweetie, just... we can take a moment for you to roll in the mud if that's going to make you more comfortable. Dr. Crud, Dr. Crud, stop the cot. <laughs> stop the cot. Olive <laughs> needs to roll. If she does that, she's going to have to be hosed down before she comes back into the cart. Oh, it's it... too cold for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's way too cold for that. It's clean inside. It has to be clean. I am a doctor who does believe in washing hands and sterilization. Well, honey, I got nothing to clean you up after that. So I guess I guess that's, oh, no, I wouldn't do that to Dr. Crud. That'd be lying. No, okay, that's fine. Well, as I go inside and chat with you, I ask you, what sorts of stores do you buy lotion from? And, and we can have that conversation inside off camera. Um, as you do that, uh, uh, Dr. Crud, are you outside the cart sitting atop it, uh, piloting it, or how does that work? I, I think uh, I, I think we had established earlier that we had actually did have a driver. Mm -mm. No, okay. So yeah, sure. Okay, he's he's big and fluffy. He 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 could take the cold easy. Oh, he's fluffy. Uh, fluffy like he's a certain comedian is fluffy. Three hundred pounds, eight feet tall, five feet wide. Mm. He's yeah. Okay. He he he's got lots of fluff. Are we talking mammoth like snuffleupagus level fluff or more of a peach fuzz? Oh no, we're talking about just fat content. <laughs> oh okay. Oh that type of fluff. Fluffy. Gotcha. It's okay. You're not familiar with him. It's okay. He's just a comedian who uses the term fluffy to describe his weight instead of its you know fluffiness. Fluffy. I like that. I like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna yeah, sit up front and sit right next to Dr. Crud, and I just stepped on your line, so I'm so sorry. Sorry. No worries. Now, all I was going to say is the last person who decided to make fun of my weight, they got their house burned down. So just. <laughs> you are quite the pacifist. <laughs> well, I didn't do the burning. I, and I saved the person that was inside. No, Olive did the burning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. We've got it all ahead of us in this adventure. Um, so uh, your your traveling uh, travel is pretty slow um, uh, on the way to Newman because these are uh, quite uh, rickety and badly kept mountain paths. Uh, there's a few corners with sheer drops. Um, there's a few areas with like fallen rocks that you have to maneuver around. Um, but after nearly an hour, you 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 find yourself you find the uh, the last milestone that says Nimbin, uh one mile. And um, Doctor Crud, could you roll me a perception or a survival check, whichever whichever you like, please. I'm sitting right sure. there, too, so if I can help him in any way, you just let me know. Oh, are you outside or inside? Tangible. I'm sitting right next to him. Oh, okay, okay. right up, cuddling. You can't even see me, though, because <laughs> sitting next to an eight-foot guy, I'm two foot tall, so it's really hard to spot me. <laughs> okay. N nonetheless, uh, please also roll me a perception or a uh, survival check, please. Okay. I can do right. that. Let me look at my statistics. I got to look they're, at my they're, statistics. They're both the same for me. Uh, can I... Can I say that I use my sense of smell to assist me in this? Yep. Because it's dark? Sure. Okay, that means I get advantage, which is good. I rolled a 19. Instead of it being 9, I rolled an 18 plus 3, so 21. Okay, well, Tangible, as you snuggle into your newfound friend um, and you just kind of take in your surroundings, um, you're at a bit of the a part of the uh, mountain pass that has narrowed, um, and... Uh, to your left, a steep, craggy cliff uh, uh, descends, and to your right, 
um, the same thing, but it ascends, you know, so you're kind of on the edge of a mountain and to your left is a plunge to your death and to the right is kind of a steep craggy cliff. It's dotted with gnarled shrubs and loose rock and stuff like that. And uh, with a 19, uh, you realize, huh, this would be a perfect place for an ambush. We should probably be careful here. Uh, Dr. Crud with your 22, was it? 21. 21. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you smell uh, like day old blood. And um, yeah, a dank that you would associate with cave dwelling. All right. Well, I smell blood. It, I don't think it's coming from my coat. <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, it's coming from around us because I also smell cave dwelling. So it could be that uh, those goblins that that uh, train driver warned us against, mm. and I think I think they sent them after us, because yeah, I still say the train driver's the big bad guy. <laughs> Furiously adjusting my notes here so that that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> so I I think uh, we need to be on our guard a little bit, and uh, so. Hey Olive, there's a uh, there might be goblins out here. So oh, Olive stretches. She was warm and cozy inside the carriage, laying out. When she lays down, she looks just like a normal crocodile that someone stuck, like a cat wearing a, a costume. Looks like a normal crocodile wearing people clothes. And then <laughs> she stretches and she is there like a. I guess the carriage would have to stop and she'd have to get out of the door to come outside. Yeah. Yeah, because there's 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 a little window, so you can open it, communicate with people inside, and then close it again. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, you'd have to get out to come outside. All right. But I don't think that's necessary just yet. Okay, I look out the window then. Okay, um, as you look out the window, um, you see a glint of something in the bushes, and it very quickly comes closer till you hear a thump in the side of the carriage as an arrow cracks into the the side wall of the carriage. Can everyone roll initiative, please? I can. I'll do that for you. I like doing that. I'll do that. Uh, four minus one is three. Okay. Thirteen minus one is twelve. Mm -hmm. Five plus two is seven. Them some low rolls. Okay. It's nice to know that I'm not the only one with a negative initiative. <laughs> Um, Not my area specialization. I stepped on your line again. I'm so sorry. Quite a right. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, Olive, boom. First uh, first uh, arrow cracks through uh, uh, near your head, um, <gasps> but does not damage you. Um, oh, oh. How, um, can I use my reaction to deflect or catch the missile? Uh, you're inside the, the, you're inside at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It just it's just sticking through the wall. I mean, you can grab it without your reaction, but you you, you know you can pull it through. Sure. Yeah. I mean, sorry. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do that. Okay. Well, I will officially roll down the window, and like, I see the arrow coming. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I I open up the door. That's faster, and I snatch it <laughs> out of the air using my reaction to catch the missile. Um, but only if it hits me. So actually, wait, no, never mind. I, okay. I'm still, I'm still in the carriage. I'm still in the carriage. Cool. <laughs> I got um, this new ability at level three and I was all excited. <laughs> uh, uh, She's very fast. Dr. Crud, your AC is 18? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. In that case, uh, you take an arrow to the shoulder. <gasps> yeah. Ow! Yeah. That's not nice. And that does seven damage. Well, you're just mean. Goblins are mean. Goblins are mean. <laughs> Little did they know the character death would be in the first half hour. <laughs> well, uh, who's next in initiative? Um, yes, tangible dreams. Destiny calls. What are you going to do? Shall you answer? Well, can I, can I see any of these boys who are firing arrows at us? Um, roll a perception check, please. Oh, I can do that. Now that I've seen the arrows, I look around and try to figure out where they're coming from. And I rolled a 12 on the die. And let me see what that looks like with my perception. Oh, that's plus three. So that's a 15. Okay, you can see one goblin. 
Is he within 120 feet of me? Yes, he is. He is. Oh, um, these guys are on a, at a, on a, in a steep embankment just above you, so they're about 20 feet away. I would like to do a fire bolt. I'm going to try to do this in such a way that my dear friend, Dr. Crud, doesn't see me hurting anybody. Uh, so I'm going to try to cover his eyes with my left hand as I fire the fire bolt out of my hand with my right hand. <laughs> Go for it. I imagine... Oh, there's no penalty for that? Okay. You know, it's not a good idea to blow the driver. Because <laughs> the cart plummets off the cliff. <laughs> I, I roll an 11 to hit, so if they're unarmored, I probably got one of them. Unfortunately, you did not get one. Um, I'm very sad. You did some damage to a shrub. Oh, I hated that shrub, so it worked out in the end. Um, it was very dry and could have used some moisturizing as well. Uh, would you mm -hmm. like to do anything else with your turn? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any other good things to do at this time, but I will, I will defer to the next player. Okay, well, the next player is a goblin who looses an arrow uh, at you, Tangible. Oh, no. I stick my tongue out and wave my hands at him. Okay, I presume a 20 hits? Oh, most days, yeah. Yeah. Um... So, Cloudy days, not so much. Uh, that is a, that is a, a five damage. Ouch! Yeah. What a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's going to hide. Chicken. And now, Olive, it's your turn. <laughs> Face me like a goblin. Both of my friends got hit by arrows, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, True. I fling open the door, <gasps> and I... Speed out of the carriage. I have a forty feet movement. Wow. Can I perception? Well, I did. I see. The, I saw the glint, right? So I. Yeah. I know the right direction. Uh, but give me a perception check anyway, just to see if you see anything else. Eleven. Eleven. No, but you see, you know where that arrow came from. There's a bit of rustling in the bushes. You know, you know where the goblins are, pretty much, and you can see one of them. So I, I leap, and I rolling land, and I, <laughs> I move. 40 feet per round, so it's, like, rapid. If you've ever seen a crocodile sprint across the ground, that's what happens. Yeah. Do I it, get close enough to an enemy to punch him? Uh, I think so. Um, yes, you do. Um, yeah, it's there's climbing involved, but, yeah, with 40 feet, you, you do indeed. Uh, so in a, a terrifyingly furtive motion, you extricate yourself from the carriage and just bound up the side of this cliff face. Um, and find yourself face to face with a, a very shocked looking goblin. <laughs> Perfect. So I rolled a natural one on my first bite attack. So okay. I guess I I didn't know exactly where they were at first. <laughs> you, you you bit some rock first, but you can handle it. <laughs> my tooth. Did you bite your tongue, honey? I hate when that happens. I catch a part of my tongue or my cheek. It's just terrible. Oh, my tongue. But with my second attack, I got a non-natural 20 to hit. That'll do it. And I, I punch them as they laugh at me as I bite my tongue. I punch them mm. for f <laughs> for six damage. Six damage. Okay. Uh, you bound up the side of this cliff face. There's a goblin looking at you like, ah! and you just cold clock him in the face. Uh, you send him reeling back. I mean, it's just against the wall that was just behind him. Just like uh, a couple of teeth have fallen out. He's, he's dazed. Um, you rocked his jaw. After first consuming some delicious roasted bush. <laughs> Mmm, giving you the, the energy that you need to follow through on those <laughs> goblin punches. Popeye. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? That ends my turn. Okay. So now we're on to Dr. Crud the Third. Yeah, well, see, this is a bit of a conundrum because Tangible has half-blinded him. Um, Olive didn't say anything about getting out of the carriage, so he has no idea she's gone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so what he does is he tries to usher his horses to go faster. Oh, no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you in town. <laughs> okay. Well, I presume you don't need to roll to do that. Um, so um, the movement speed of your cart, I'm going to say, is 30 feet. Um, okay. Because uh, it's a horse-laden cart. Uh, so you're now 30 feet further along the, along the, uh, along the path, which I'll count as your movement. Um, so you still have action, bonus actions, and like anything you'd like to do, any healing or any, anything like that. Dr. Crud, I want you to know, um, 
Olive jumped out and started beating on the goblins with their hands and mouth. And so we're going to be leaving her behind. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying I want you to be aware that you did that. What, what, what are you talking about? I mean, I didn't see that. Of course, I can't see much of nothing with your hand over my face. Well, I don't want you to have to endure watching people get injured. I mean, that's what you take care of. We don't want you to look at that kind of stuff. That's nonsense. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be injuring people in the first place. What we do is we either talk to them or we run. And if they call us fat, we burn their house down. <laughs> right. Seems fair. Damage to property is fine because property is not a living being. Those are my morals. <laughs> um, <laughs> so while this conversation is going on, he's going to touch uh, TD on the hand, trying to remove his, her hand from his, his sight, and cast Virtue, which gives her temporary hit points equal to 1d4 plus my spellcasting modifier. So that is going to be nine. Nine temporary hit points. Seems like a lot of hit points. Lovely. Okay. Um, so uh, back to uh, the goblin who just got, who just got decked. Um, he shakes it off, looks up and sees what's in front of him, a little gnome. And he kind of grins to himself. And um, is that right? No, sorry, Olive. You're not a gnome, are you? I'm a crocodile. <laughs> I'm a gnome. I can't believe you confused me with Olive. <laughs> that is so embarrassing for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> it wasn't until you said that, but uh, now I'm deeply ashamed. Okay, so he sees this uh, this crocodile in front of him, um, and he looks worried. So he pulls a potion from his belt. No, don't. <laughs> grabs the cork between his, his teeth um, and just throws it back, whereupon... He explodes. Oh, uh, kind of. Um, you see him locking eyes with you and looking a bit concerned as his, his eyebrows twitch and he starts burping a little bit and then and he just hulks out his first his like neck muscles burst through his jerkin, then his arms burst out of his sleeves. His legs follow suit as he just and just explodes to like basically ogre size in front of you. Um, all his clothes torn asunder. Um, you've now got a giant naked goblin right at eye level. It's not pleasant. He smells like cave. And uh, he, he screams loud, uh, pulls a shrub um, out, of the, um, out of the rocks beside him and swings it at you. With the way he smells, suddenly biting people seems like a poor choice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think... You know, you're a crocodile. I think their their palates are going to be a, di a bit different to what we're we're accustomed to. Um, so that is a, a 24 to hit. That hits? Yeah. Olive did eat some poison food without realizing it <laughs> a few adventures ago. And uh, that, is, uh, that is 12 hit points he takes off you. Oh, unless, dang. Uh, unless you've got some sort of monk uh, techniques for, for not making that happen. No. No, okay. I don't. It's not okay. a missile being flung at me, so... You take no. a, sh a dry, scratchy shrub to the, to the face. Um, oh, and I go down from 24 to 12 hit points. Uh, could you roll a dexterity saving throw as well, please? <laughs> Two plus four is six. Okay, you get knocked, uh, you get knocked uh, prone off the edge of the thing um, for... Another one hit point. Uh, you landed in some shrubs. You're okay. Um, huh. But that was not pleasant <laughs> for poor little Olive. Or poor big scaly Olive. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, he's pretty pleased with himself and he kind of beats his chest and, and roars. You didn't just call her fat, did you, Mr. Goblin? Because we're going to have to have words if that's the case. Oh, um, actually, can anyone here speak, Goblin? That's a lovely question. I should know the answer to that. Nope. Hmm. I don't think anyone does. What? Oh, I think a couple of you speak Orcish, though, right? I've got nope. Draconic, because it's similar. It's like Italian to Spanish, Draconic to lizard folk, where I hmm. can hear the words, you know, make myself understood. Uh, so no one speaks Orca Goblin? Okay, yeah, he says something, but you've no idea what it is. Um, whereupon another goblin hops up out of the, uh, um, out of the bushes 
and sees that the cart is escaping. Uh, so he bounds towards it, um, and it takes him his full move, but... Yeah, he manages to climb up atop the cart from the back. Um, and that is with a dash. That is his whole go. Tangible, you're up. Tangible's gonna throw magic missile. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that spell, but it's a lovely little thing that forces things to go boom. And I'm gonna make it go boom. That would be six points total, three magic missiles, all hitting, because they never miss, and it's force damage. So I'm thinking that's six points of damage to this sneaky little jumpy goblin. You want to hit the jumpy guy? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you, you hear a hudump on the canvas on the back of the, on the top of the cart, and you wheel around. Three magic missiles. Um, he's going to roll a dex check to see if he falls off, because that's only fair, isn't it? And he crits on that one. Um, somehow your magic missiles have strengthened his resolve. His resolve. Uh, six hit points, was it? It was six, yeah. And I okay. love the term resolve with a D. That's so much more fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's because it's in the past tense. Um, yeah, yeah, but he looks pretty messed up. Um, he has uh, uh, he absorbed quite a fair amount of force damage, but he's, um, he's angry. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do at your turn, Tangible? Oh, uh, I'll take my hand back away from uh, Dr. Crud's face and let him know there's a guy behind us. Okay. And with that, uh, the third goblin, uh, who's still up on the embankment, uh, pops up and assesses the situation um, and decides to fire an arrow at Olive with disadvantage because she is Ooh. prone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Disadvantage. Yeah. Um, he... He misses. He misses. Uh, oh. Well, I, I presume a five and eleven. It's <laughs> an eleven hit. Yeah. No. 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 That no. Misses. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. You, you're dying to get this. Uh, is it? Is it a one a day thing? This <laughs> no, arrow catching. No, I can just catch missiles that hit me oh, and throw them back. <laughs> damn. I wish you'd hit. Okay. Um, yeah, but he doesn't hit. Um, okay. And then he, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna then uh, use his movement to get towards the carriage. So he's kind of now, if you can picture it, uh, the carriage is towards the town. Um, he's standing now basically on the road between the carriage and Olive, and everyone else is on the carriage, and then the big ogre guy is up on the embankment, and one goblin is on top of the carriage. Uh, yes, so, um, it is now Olive's turn. All right. You are prone. I'm going to spend two key points, because I'm new to monkeying, and I don't know if I can do that or not. Can I do that? Can I spend two? Um, I'm also new to monkeying. It sounds good to me. Um... Also, is one of them to do one of those cool things where you stand up by kicking your legs up in the air? That would be great. <laughs> I, well, it could, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow that for free because you're a monk and that's cool. <laughs> cool. You should just um, be able to no, do that. No, actually, I um, I, I want to spend one key point to take patient defense, which means that I can, as a bonus action, I take the dodge action, and dodge means that until the start of my next turn, any attack roll made against me has disadvantage if I can see the attacker and I make dexterity saving throws with advantage. I lose this benefit if I'm incapacitated, which means I can't take actions or reactions. Like if someone ties me up, I can't dodge. Right. All right. Okay. So that was my my first key point, patient defense. Mm -hmm. Dodge until the start of my next turn. And then my second key point, I've noticed that with flurry of blows, I can do a certain bonus thing. So I'm going to use flurry of blows. First, I'm going to... I'm going <laughs> to... All right. So... I use my movement to stand up mm -hmm. and can I like, I don't want to actually like change where I'm standing. I just want to like be on the uphill side of this guy, the really big buff one instead of the downhill well, side. Is well, that you, you've been knocked, you've been knocked off the embankment. So doing so would involve climbing up again. Oh, okay. So when I don't you're know if I made that clear. prone, you have to use half of your movement to stand up and then I have 20 feet left. Yeah, although as I'm going to say, just for flavor, and it's fun, you can, you're a monk, you can just get up for not half your movement. So I'm a nice, a nice DM. Aw, uh, this is very nice of you, and I'm, I'm probably pretty close to that guy too, right? So I just want to... Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a question of how far away from the edge are we? Um, the edge of where you fell from? Well, like... Or the edge behind you to Oblivion. Oblivion. Oblivion edge. Oblivion. Um, yeah, that's about... Um, uh, well, the road is about 20 feet wide, and it kind of leads to the edge. So there's wall on one side, 20 feet, and then a, sh a sheer drop to the other. Okay. Um, and right. you're in the middle of that road, so you're 10 feet from either. 
Okay, so I'm 10 feet from Oblivion and 10 feet from this guy. So yeah, I can stand up, mm. use my 20 feet remaining movement, get on the other side of him, and now I'm on the like uphill side of him and I want to push him towards Oblivion, like if I were to... Okay, so I use Flurry of Blows, and mm -hmm. immediately after I take the attack action on my turn, I can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action, and when it hits, I can... They must make a strength saving throw, and if they fail, I can push them 15 feet away from me. So if I do this twice, I can push them off the cliff. Um, Which is kind of fun. So I, Okay, first, okay, I'm, I'll allow that, I'll allow that, yeah. So first I bite them. It's a 20 mm -hmm. to hit. Yep. Eight damage. Okay. And uh, I crocodile jaw around their surprisingly big form, and I bite them. Then I punch them with a 17 to hit. Uh, yes, that also hits. And that's for six damage, which is max. That's the max I do. So uh, the second unarmed strike is a 14 to hit. Also hits. For five damage. Mm -hmm. And this is non lethal damage, so I'm like striking critical weakness points where I'm like punched you under the chin. I don't know where weak mm -hmm. points are. Probably not that. That's actually, that seems hard. I don't want to. <laughs> Player doesn't know much about punching. <laughs> With how large this guy is now, you could take a a a, a page out of TDE's book and just you know speed bag his balls. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to touch that. Um, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> they are fully on display as we have established. <laughs> And then because I hit them, which I did hit with flurry of blows, please make a strength saving throw. Okay, this is, he's got 19 strength at the moment, so. Plus four, oh, and that's a total of eight. Okay, with a failure, I don't, does that mean I do a strength saving throw too? Like, I don't know, it says they must make a strength saving throw failure, but it doesn't really say what the. I think it's safe to say that eight is a failure no matter what, but. Uh... <laughs> okay, then they, they are pushed to 15 feet away from me, which puts them five feet away from the edge. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Okay, so the way I'm picturing this is that you whoop, m ninja jump back up, scuttle up the side of the cliff around this guy's like, oh, or like maybe you run through his legs or something, he's like, oh. Uh, and then, yeah, do one of those. It's like a like a Mortal Kombat or a Virtua Fighter style combo where you're punching them and they're like suspended in the air as you keep on hitting them. We're like, oh, 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 oh. You spin around and kick him, and he goes flying off the first edge. Bounces in the middle of the in the middle of the uh, the path, the path, the road, and slides right over to the edge of the of the of the embankment. Oblivion below him. Nice turn. Yeah. Um, so he's. Oh, how many hit points was that in total, by the way? Eight plus six plus five, so nineteen. Cool. Uh, and uh, is that the end of your turn then? That's the end so. of my turn. Cool. Uh, Doctor Crud. Here up. Well, now that Dr. Crud can see, and he has been warned about the goblin on his, the back of his carriage, he's going to drop the reins, stand up, mm -hmm. walk back there, and scoop it up with his net. Quick question. How sturdy is the, is the roof of this, of this? Can it hold your weight is my question. Oh, yeah. No, it has been specifically built by the crud family who are notoriously large and heavy mm -hmm. uh it is it is yeah it's it has no canvas it's it's all like made out of oak wood framed very well like a house beautiful they don't make stuff like that yeah. anymore no you know this was this was specially made so it's been in the family for three generations so is dr crud gonna try and grapple this goblin uh yeah he's going to scoop it up with his net oh you have a net Yes. Okay. Um, do you know how net attacks work? Because I don't have yes. idea. Okay. Well then, <laughs> go for it. Well, I uh, I roll a net twenty on that, oh. so it scoops them up. Or a net twenty, if you will. Oh, that was funny. Yes, a net twenty. Oh, you are very, very good, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say he's netted. <laughs> yeah, he is now restrained, mm. as opposed to natted. Mm. Restrained. And for, uh, what does that do? Uh, speed becomes uh, zero, disadvantage on attack rolls. Attack rolls against him have advantage, and he has disadvantage on deck saving throws. Okay, uh, cool. Um, anything else you'd like to do while you have this uh, uh, goblin in a grocery bag? Yeah, I'm going to sit on him. <laughs> okay, um, beautiful. Um, so now, uh, yeah, uh, it is, no, he's restrained. Um, oh yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, and, and he, he's also good to tell the goblet, oh, by the way, buddy, oh, that's not a nice thing you're doing, so you need to stop. Tell your friends to stop. His response is, <laughs> Don't you take that tone with me. That's not a very nice thing. Oh, I did. He's I don't know what. <laughs> All right. You, now you're interrupting, and it's very rude. Oh. You need to stop. Oh, this guy don't understand that, Boba. Hey, look. I will do something to you that you will probably not like if you keep this up. And he spits in your face. <laughs> and Dr. Crud starts tickling him. <laughs> Lily, that's, uh, that's your... I that's told your, you you unlock it. That's your free object interaction. And, <laughs> okay, now it's the turn of the goblin who's making chase uh, over towards the... Um, uh, over towards the cart. He sees your hulking strength and decides that uh, uh, one-on-one combat might not be the best thing, unless maybe... Oh! He pulls a potion off his belt, uncorks it, <laughs> and his head explodes! <laughs> Everyone in a 20-foot radius is showered in, uh, in goblin brain and green blood and shards of goblin skull. Oh. Um... Uh, but nobody's nobody's close enough to to take any damage. So this goblin is just now a crater in the ground. <laughs> yeah, he's the hey, uh, take... TD. Oh yeah, we may not want to drink these things. <laughs> no, I'm I'm looking right there, and I'm thinking that was interesting. And I pick a piece of the brain off your head, and I taste it to see if the potion flavor comes through. The potion flavor does not come through. No, it's very sad. It's just mm. goblin brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, I'm looking for, is there any more? Are there any more to kill? Because I could certainly kill something right now. So what we have is um, one goblin being sat on uh, and one uh, dazed by the edge of the cliff lying prone. Uh, um, yeah. How far away is he from me? That's all I need to know. Uh, is it? 30 or 120? I, I got two different. He's more like 20 feet away, um, but it is oh. his It is his turn. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. And I then didn't need to jump the gun there. That's all right. No, it makes sense. And he's not prone. Just for the record, he's not prone. Uh, the guy got pushed back? Yeah, he is not prone. Oh, knocked. Prone, no, Janai. He is not prone. <laughs> he's standing. N O T prone. Oh, he's prone. Well, no, he he got knocked yeah. off the edge of something, so I'm I'm saying he is prone. Oh no, but it's one of my like I can spend more to make them prone, and I didn't, so they're not. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, all right. Well, he's just uh, he did one of those uh, one of those anime skids backwards, where he's like, yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, pretty nifty for someone of his size. Okay, um, he's annoyed. Um, yeah, and he's he's full of testosterone right now, so he's gonna. Come straight back at Olive. Um, you should have punched him in the testicles. <laughs> Thanks, tangible. No worries. <laughs> okay, and because I took the dodge action, that means that any attack roll made against me has disadvantage if I can see the attacker. Okay, so he um, uh, he manages to climb back up. Uh, his big hulking body just hauling itself up. He's like, uh, grabs grabs a different... Um, uh, what you would call it? A uh, different shrub and swings that at you. Um, but he only rolls, he rolls a 13. Does that hit? No. Woo, disadvantage. Yay. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, he, he rolls a nine with disadvantage. Yeah, he, he, he swings and you do this. Oh, can, do you want to explain what kind of ninja dodge uh, you got going on? How does this work? I duck to like knee height and then stand Ooh. back up very rapidly. So cool. Uh, he does this like, whoa. Um, yeah, that's his turn. Um, so it is now tangible's go. Oh, in this case, since there's one still fighting and not netted, I'm going to go ahead and cast at the second level, Witch Bolt, uh, which is a 15. It hits as a 15. Does 15 hit this uh, goblinoid type creature? I'm sorry, the restrained guy or the big dude? The big dude. Uh, yes, it hits him, yeah. Oh, well, then he takes 20 points of damage from lightning. <gasps> Damn. <laughs> okay. He didn't like that at all. I did. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Good. It's important to enjoy your work. <laughs> I do. I so love it. 
Okay, yeah, you zap this guy. Do you want to explain what that looks like? Sure. It's like a lightning bolt shoots out of my fingers, pulled down from the sky. It just sort of appears, and the distance between us is filled with this charge of electricity, and then it just zaps him. <laughs> he does this as his, his skeleton is fully visible through, his, through the rest of his body, and he kind of shakes up and down. Um, yeah, nice work. Anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Any movement or bonus actions or anything? I'm going to wag a finger at the one that's restrained in the net and say, you are a bad boy. Uh, he doesn't understand that. <laughs> no, that's fine. I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, um, so it is now his go. And he, with disadvantage, is going to attempt to bite his way out of this net. Um, do you know what the AC on your net is? By any chance? Yes. Okay. That is... 13 and a 3 so it's not going to work he's he's at disadvantage um yeah nothing else he can do um he attempts to disengage but you know uh olive here we go olive was feeling so good after her turn last time that she got cocky <laughs> <laughs> and instead of biting or punching this person i bite the air next to them with a 5 to hit and then i go to punch them and i got a natural one on the dice oh boy okay um, but thankfully, yeah. we've established I'm 20 feet from the edge of the of the oblivion. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, you swing and you do like a leaning over the edge thing, and just manage to grab onto some gnarled shrubbery uh, before you fall off. Um, oh, so uh, I'm like at the edge now? <laughs> uh, uh, no, sorry to explain. Uh, you're not at the. Uh, where are we? Yeah, no, he came back up to where you were. So mm -hmm. he's he's atop the embankment. So you're actually you've, the road is between you two and the edge edge, and you're just yeah. up. Okay, I hope oh. I'm I hope I'm explaining this well. There's basically okay, so if you imagine there are two paths. You're on the higher one yeah. that's shrubs, and you couldn't fit a cart on it. And the other one is below you. That's wide enough for a cart where everyone else is. Okay. So if you do fall from here, you're going to be okay. All right. Um, uh, is that your full turn? That's my full ineffectual turn. Okay, Dr. Crud, you're sitting on a goblin. Um, he spat on you. Um, what's, what's your plan? Hey, TD, when you get a chance, instead of murdering people, will you just go ahead and stop the cart? Sure, I can stop the cart. I think I can do that right now. Let me try. All right, and no murder. <laughs> oh, I like your horses. They're lovely. Uber and Lyft. I think I'm going to befriend them. Plus, I got to taste the barley. I, I I I see what you're doing there, and that that's not cool, dude. Not agreeing Tan to not murder, or <laughs> yeah, tangible. I uh, I will um, allow you if you want to use your action to stop the cart. Now you can, otherwise it's like a free action on your turn. Oh, I'll I will love to try to do it right now. Is that what do I got to do to do that? What what is the trick to that? Hmm, I'm gonna say uh, do you, well. I don't know. Does tangible have any uh, horse riding experience or experience? Uh, um. Piloting a cart. Uh, no, I've yeah. never done anything like this. It's kind of exciting and invigorating for me. I'm thinking this is fun. Okay, well then I, I will say it's either a um, animal handling or just a straight dex check, whichever you prefer. Uh, well, that's a really good question. Let me think about that for just a second. I don't have any decks, so I'm going to go with the animal handling plus one. Okay. Let's see what that. Oh, well, let's say it's a twenty, not natural. Oh, okay, yeah, you you definitely halt the cart. That's the the two horses stand to attention. So much easier than I thought it would be. You're a natural. I am. Aw. Oh, thanks uh, for noticing. Dr. Crud, uh, it's still your turn. Anything else you'd like to do? Yes, he's going to uh, he's going to shoot a spell over at that other goblin. The big giant one? Uh, it's called Command. Yes, okay. it's called Command. Uh, he's going to speak a one-word command, and he, that uh, goblin has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Does the goblin need, does he need to be able to understand you? Some um, some spells do, some spells don't. Yeah, you're you're that's that's good. I do have to. Yeah, if it does not understand me, so it doesn't understand me, I take it. Um, you know what? I'm going to roll an intelligence check to see if this goblin has picked up any common along the way, and if I okay. if I beat a fifteen. It's a no, plus zero, then yeah, he'll understand it. A simple command. It's a 12, so no, he doesn't, he wouldn't understand it. He does not. No. Okay, so no, Cred, Dr. Cred is just going to, uh, he, he's just going to keep sitting on the uh, the other goblin and tickling him. Okay, I am going to say, yeah, he suffers two more hit points based on your, just your sheer weight. Um, 
So he's yeah, he's in a lot of pain, but he's saying, oh, still, getting still getting tickled. Oh yeah, he, he, Doctor Crow's not sitting on him in a way to smother him. Oh, okay, he's rest- it's it's just additional risk restraining. Okay, okay, he, he's done this before. He knows his weight. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Then it's a Gigantor Goblin, um, who um, is having a really bad day by all accounts. Um, he is gonna straight up swing at Olive again. Uh, you didn't disengage or anything, Olive, right? You're you're in in melee with this guy. That's correct. Olive might die. Okay, and he swings, and he rolls a natural one, so he's going to do a deck check to see if he falls. Um, and he no, he managed to keep his footing. Um, <laughs> so we're both teetering on the edge over the road. Uh, basically, yeah, yeah. Um, tangible, you're up. Uh, not taking any chances with this big guy who's very bad. I stand up to try to hide it from Dr. Crud, and then I fire magic missiles for seven total force damage points. Um, okay, at the at the big dude. At the big dude, because you said he was close enough. Uh, yeah, he is, yeah. Um, yeah, he that explodes in his chest, and he lets out a low, good roll. Dr. Crud, I think he's having a heart attack. <laughs> A natural heart attack. <laughs> yeah, you see, as he, I may have been born at night, but I wasn't born last night. You see him clutching his chest, and his left arm goes limp. <laughs> see, it's a heart attack. Look, his left arm's hurting. Uh, anything else on your turn, Tangible? Uh, no, I'm just gonna hold on to the reins of the horse, stand up, and look commanding and important. At two feet tall. At two and a half feet tall, that's right. <laughs> you stand up and you puff your chest out just as a, a, a gust of wind blows some snow across your face and you look you look so cool. Everyone loves it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fan uh, art invitation time. <laughs> <laughs> the hero pose. Okay, so the restrained goblin... Uh, um, let me see, here's a disadvantage. Oh, yeah, he rolled a nat 20 to bite out, but he's a disadvantage and he rolled a five. So no, he still can't manage to... Uh, get his way out of this net. Olive, Mudo, you're up. Ooh, all right. Olive, teetering on the edge above the road, is going to try to non-lethally punch and bite the giant goblin that she's facing. Okay. First, biting for a 14 to hit. That'll do it. Ooh, for three damage. Okay. And then trying to punch for a 13 to hit. That also hits. He's a big <gasps> dude. Oh my gosh. For three damage. Okay. Um, Yeah, he's just... Go on. And then I use patient defense to spending my last key point to take the dodge action to make myself more likely to survive (laughs) until the next round. (laughs) You just dart in, bite a chunk out of his leg, and I hit him a few digs, and then just step away with this, like, kind of matrix, kind of come hither thing going on. (laughs) Yeah. Lovely. Uh... And you got patient defense on again. Uh, Dr. Crud, you're up. Yes. Oh, I'm up. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so just to, just to recap, uh, you are restraining one little goblin guy, and then up on the ledge just above you and about 20 feet away is this ogre-sized goblin, completely naked, uh, covered in holes from spell damage and, like, swaying around, swinging a, swinging a shrub at Olive and not really doing, doing much of anything with it. But we look real cool as we, like, swing right over where their head would be and someone ducks and then another person punches and... Oh, it's very dram- very dramatic. Yeah. Well, Dr. Crud has experience with Olive. He knows that, that uh, she's not going to murder hobo this thing. So he, he, he trusts her. He got it in hand. So he's just going to take out a rope and secure this goblin's hands and, and, uh, and legs together. Cool. Okay. Um, I think a uh, sleight of hand or dex check would be in order there. Oh, okay. Let's see okay. how good of a job you do. Where is my sleight of hand? Yeah. Whoo! Wow. And my dex. Okay. So negative one on both counts. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I rolled a nineteen, so it's going to be an eighteen. Okay. He's here. Yeah, he looks tied up. He looks pretty well tied up. Um, is he still inside the net? For now, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's not going anywhere. I, I wasn't going to let him out to tie him up. But now I can safely remove the net when I want to. Mm, nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Things are getting dire for uh, Gigantor over on the hill. Uh, and he's very frustrated. So he's going to once again swing. Um, I presume a 23 hits, Olive. 
Please roll with disadvantage. Oh, of course. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and that is a 21. Um, yeah, that hits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And he does uh, seven damage. I'm at four hit points. Ouch. Ouchie. Okay. And patient defense, is that that's finished now, is it? Or does it keep going? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, the end of his turn. Uh, tangible? Tangible puts him to sleep. Okay. Can you explain how that works, please? Sure. I pull a little sand out. I make a little blowing motion as if to wish somebody to go to bed nice and sleepy-like, like you're tucking a child in. Mm-hmm. And then I cast this little spell over him. And it, it just encircles him, 20-foot sphere, and makes him very drowsy. Okay, does that affect Olive as well? Because they're right beside each other. It does. But okay. I was trying to angle it uh, as much as possible so it wouldn't affect her. But she's only got four hit points left, and maybe she's tired. Um, so tired. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to roll a straight D6, see if it affects her or not. Uh, one to three, it does. And I got a three, so it does affect her. Um, but... Uh, the goblin's on more hit points, so... Do, do, does he need to roll a save now, or how does this work? Oh, I don't know. I think the way sleep works is that there's a number of hit points of creatures, starting with the lowest mm-hmm. mm. that it affects. Okay, so that's you. That sounds right. Okay, so what do you roll? The spell sends creatures into a magical slumber. Roll 5d8. Sleep, the spell in D&D 5th edition. Step 1, do math. Step two. <laughs> yeah, 5d8, please, uh, tangible. Sure. Let's do 18 total points. The total, total is very how many well. hit points of creatures this spell can affect. Creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Okay, so- that is enough to put you both to sleep. Um, again, I'm going to roll a d6. Uh, one to three, you fall off the edge. And that is a one. You oh. do fall off the edge. Oh, no. <laughs> and the other guy does not fall off the edge. Thankfully, because he's going to fall in on you. Um, so, uh, falling damage. How does that work again? Sliding down a hill, she went like a shark. Slipping all the way till she found some bark. <laughs> okay, uh, you've got uh, inspiration for that. Uh you got one inspiration die for, for your little ditty. Let that be a lesson to the rest of you. I like improvised songs. Uh, Olive, you've suffered three hit points, um, which is lucky because you're down to one, I think. <laughs> down to one. Still hanging on. Yeah. And, um, Always believe this, in the power of song. <laughs> uh, this guy uh, collapses and, yeah, he does a... And he returns to his normal little goblin size. And uh, you just see this little horrible... Bashed up goblin. Point point of order. I just got a quick question here. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure I understood what happened. I think Olive went to sleep, mm-hmm. slipped and fell, and then mm-hmm. took damage, which I believe then gives them an opportunity not to be asleep no more. I could be wrong on that, but I <laughs> oh, think that's okay. how that works. Okay. Yeah. So you fell asleep, fell, and then you hit the ground. Um, it doesn't say anything in the damage, spell about though. it. Yeah. Oh, I thought if you took damage, it, it can't. Let me it just had an opportunity to save against it. Let me just see if you're unconscious. Um, incapacitate, drop, attack, any attack. No, nothing about that in the unconscious uh, thing. No, so she's just on the ground um, on one hit point. Um, but sleeper takes damage. Oh, each creature affected by this spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. The sleeper takes damage as someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. Okay, all right. Uh, you're you're back up then, Olive. My bad. Well, this worked perfectly. You got a nap, too. I'm laying on the road, bleeding from my head, where I just cracked against the ground because mm-hmm. I fell from a cliff. Yeah. Mm. So refreshing. Thank you, Tangible. <laughs> you say cliff. It was a little wall. A little wall. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to stay in initiative order, um, but there's no, other, there's no immediate threats happening right now. Um, it's the restrained goblins go but he is uh yeah he's not going anywhere he's fully tied up i mean if i crit he might be able to undo his <laughs> yeah i crit it he undoes his uh with you have disadvantage um oh that's true yeah okay 
Yeah, okay, he didn't crit twice. Wow. Um, that is the second time he's critted to try and get out of these restraints. He really doesn't like being restrained. <laughs> he's got some he's got some childhood trauma that's that's coming up now. Um and he's really not having a good time. Uh so Olive, it's your turn. Is the creature on the top of the hill it's not dead. Okay, all right. So I move I scurry up the hill towards the sleeping goblin. I take mm-hmm. out my rope and I start to restrain it. Okay, um, sleight of hand or dex check, please. Natural 20. Wow, okay. Could have used that earlier. <laughs> That's some serious Boy Scouts Ranger stuff going on. Um, yeah, you uh, tie a beautiful, I don't know, a sheep shank. Would that make sense in this scenario? These are not expert. Yeah, sure. you tie him up real good. Um, he's also restrained. It's a goblin shank, actually. A goblin shank. Oh, yeah, they're very popular this time of year. Goblin shanks are all the vogue. Beautiful. Okay, they're both restrained. I'm going to say combat is over. Um, yeah, you're standing there in the aftermath of this battle. Horses are a little bit rattled, but they're okay. Uh, the snow has died down a little bit, and you are basically a mile from, uh, from Nimbin. It's late at night. It's cold. I'm going to go ahead and take this arrow out of my shoulder. <laughs> Actually, you you're going to want me to do that. I'm a doctor, so just give me a, give me a little bit of time. I I got to have to patch all of us up. Uh Dr. Craig's is just going to dump that uh goblin over the side of the carriage onto the ground. Okay. And he's going to climb down, push the red button uh on his carriage. Little door opens up and he has an entire medical ward sitting right there in a dimension door. <laughs> He calls to his nursing staff, nursing staff. All right, go ahead, go get, uh, go get Miss Olive. She's gonna need some help. Don't, do not put her in room one. The the tabaxi and her kittens are in there. Go ahead, put her in room two, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get her patched up. Thank you. I I get kind of hungry when I'm injured, so that's considerate of you. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, Olive walks up limping, carrying a tied up goblin. Oh, just put that thing on the ground. It's just going to stay here. But we can't leave them in the snow. That's murder. No, we can. They'll bite out of it eventually. They got real sharp teeth. They're, they're, they're survivors. They'll be fine. Oh, like putting a mouse in a cardboard box. Well, uh, don't you want to, like, question them or take them with us for interrogation or identification? Do you speak goblin? Because I sure as heck don't. And that, all they did was get a little at me. Well, in a town, maybe someone else would. I mean, if you want to take them, I guess we could. Yeah, Olive I- picks them up, kind of like holding the rope, and they're slumping in the ropes. <laughs> She's treating them like dead weight. The one is asleep, and the other is, well, protesting. Protesting. <laughs> and she takes both inside the carriage. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a little onion, onion bag of goblins with you. Yeah. Yeah, just keep in mind, this isn't a dungeon. This is a hospital, so keep a good eye on them. Okay, with my one hit point, I agree. <laughs> well, you're, you're, getting, you're getting treatment in the, in the hospital. <laughs> what are the mechanics of this hospital? Is this a short rest? Is this a medicine check? What are we doing? Uh, it's a dimension thing. That we did not get into how the, that would do it, so I will... Uh, defer to our normal dm on how this will how that would work to avoid breaking the rules i would stat it like a derns or whatever it's called instant fortress where it's got a hundred hit points of health so if somebody were to attack it from the outside they could break it break down the carriage you know okay Um, so if like let's say a goblin were hulk smashing against the side of the carriage it would have a hundred hit points and then inside the carriage it's reasonable to say that whatever spell slots Dr. Crud the Third has, you could do half of those spell slots again. That way, it'll level up with you and it'll grow with you and, and it, it can be something that you enjoy. But it's also not too broken. Okay, so I got six spell slots, so the it, the hospital would have three. Yeah, sure. Okay. I would also suggest that you could just as easily, because it's safe, you could take a short rest inside of it and roll some hit dice, but whatever you want to do. Okay, uh, so would the spells that the hospital knows be the same ones I, I know? Yeah, okay. and it's so, safe to say that like maybe like one spell slot per level, like one first, 
you know, so like like push them in the same ratio that you get your spell slots now, so that they're not all your highest yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So right now it would be two first and one second. Yeah. So the hospital is going to do a prayer of healing for all three of us. And we're going to get back plus 18 hit points. Whoa. Each? Yeah. Whoa. Does that mean the skin just forms around the arrow that's stuck in me? Or does the arrow pop back out and then heal itself around it? Whatever you like it is self-serve. <laughs> I would prefer the arrow to be gone. I think that it's best not to walk around with an arrow. I think that'd scare people. <laughs> like in general. That, they, here's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and remove it real quick. And then, then, then the spell will hit. Okay. All right. I trust you. You've you're, you're been good to me so far. I'm, I'm thinking that's okay. And since he knows how much healing it's going to do, he just yanks it out. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh, my goodness. That hurt. For somebody who doesn't do pain, that seems like a lot of pain you just inflicted there. And your boo-boo's all gone. Well, you know, pain medication has not really been invented yet. So, I mean... Type of torture, I see. And then we had some temporary hit points. I'm assuming they're gone, or maybe I just did. Yeah, you did, and yeah, after initiative was dropped, it was, that those go away. All gone. So I'm just back to normal. Are you at hmm. full hit points? I am. I'm 17 hit points, assuming that 18 covered me. And then I, I noticed that I speak common, gnomish, infernal, and orc. I didn't realize where that was before, but now I know. Ah, okay. Uh, then, yeah, um, you uh, you understood a fair bit of what the goblin said, and it was just... Um, um, rude. It was so rude. Yeah. Yeah, really harsh insults. Some of them regional, which you didn't get. Uh, this, this region, this is kind of mountain goblin, which is actually closer to orc than most other dialects. Uh, but even wow. still, there were some really, like, you could just tell there were really choice, really intricate insults about Dr. Crud and his trunk specifically. Oh, they didn't like him. Oh, that's good to mm. know. Yeah, there was something about the trunk being like uh, um, the larva of a purple worm, um, which is a grave oh, insult that was amongst scary. goblins. Yeah, that's gruesome. <laughs> goblins hate purple worms, yeah, because they yeah. eat them. They're, it's terrible. They're both figuratively and literally very sharp-tongued. Uh, yeah. And then okay. I'm at 19 out of 24, Dr. Crud. So is there any way you can do another five? Or should I use a hit dice? I can use a hit dice. I can probably... Yeah, you can use a hit die. Okay, since we're taking a short rest, I guess I'm inside the carriage taking a short rest as we continue. And you said we're a mile away, so I probably have like an hour. Uh, yeah, yeah. It takes you if you want to go ahead. It takes you roughly an hour to get into Nimbin. Okay, that takes two hit dice, and I'm back up to twenty four. Cool. Uh, so is that what you're gonna do? Yeah, I'm inside the the thing. I guess I'm hanging out with some goblins in their hospital room, sitting on a visitor's chair as they're, like, handcuffed inside their hospital bed. Oh, they don't get beds. They, they were not very nice. They get the specialized prison seats that are right, that are, that are in room number five. <laughs> room number five? Okay. That has a couple of seats in there that you just tie, that you just strap them in and they can't do anything. You put a spit hood over them and... We're all good. All right. So the same rope DC, but for flavor. They're in chairs. <laughs> Absolutely. I like flavor. Okay. So now, I'm, sorry, I, go I'm just going to say if we did a short rest, I'm going to go ahead and recover one of my second level spell slots. Nice wizards. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to just trust you on spell slots. I don't have the capacity to keep, keep track of all that stuff. Um, <laughs> no worries, I got you covered. Cool, cool. Um, so, just to be clear, are you going to make your way towards the village, or do you want to do something else? Um, I think that we were we, we were going to continue going to the village just at a slower pace, so that uh, that uh, Olive gets her her rest in. Okay, so I get my rest, and I come outside, and I, I'm like in the main body of the carriage, leaning through that limo style window, talking to Doctor Crud. And tangible, and I, I whisper and I say, "Hey guys." Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. It's... I'm not often referred to as a guy, but I'll go with it. Keep going. 
yeah, it's an inclusive, gender-neutral term for a group. Um, so it's possible that this town that we're going to has been overrun by goblins and could really use Dr. Crud's healing. Because if those goblins had potions, which were made by gnomes in this town, we might not be seeing a pretty sight. So for the faint of heart, if you smell meat, don't get hungry. <laughs> you know, we're gonna... <laughs> who knows what's in this town? But I'm just saying, if you're squeamish, look away. Are you saying maybe you want to stop just outside of town and that way you can go in and go scout real quick, see if uh, it's all clear? That's not a bad idea. Sure. See, I told you I wasn't born last night. You weren't. Yeah. Let's do that. I say a little curse of being a pacifist group in Infernal to myself. Oh, I'm not a pacifist. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. You, you know that gobbledygook that they're speaking. No, that's a different gobbledygook. But I do, I am curious if Olive responds or understands Infernal. Nope. I am not demonic. I'm just a crocodile. Okay. Okay. All right. I see how it is. You call me names. Calling me demonic. I get it. All right. <laughs> so you, as you this... talk uh, to demons. <laughs> no, you girls just go right ahead. You go right ahead. Call me names. It's fine. All right, everybody. Let's all just get along. We're all friends here. And Dr. Crud will lean over and give T.D. a big old hug. Oh, I like hugs. I am envisioning you being eight foot tall. <laughs> And I'm two and a half foot tall, and you hugging me, and I just go all southern all over you when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as this touching moment is unfolding, uh, the carriage uh, rounds a corner uh, in the mountains, and you see this uh, the small quaint village of Nimmin just rising up in front of you. Um, there are lights dotted here and there, even though it's at night. There's what could be a tavern and a few dwellings that still have lights on, but for the most part, people... Um, it looks like I've gone to bed. You can't really make it a huge amount because it's dark. Um, but you do see a sign saying, um, Nimbin, population 300. Oh, good. It's not burned down. It doesn't look like it's been ransacked from what you can see from here, but you can't see much. Okay. And I'm trying to smell the air and see if I can smell any cooked flesh or any a meat barbecuing or anything like that, because that really, it, I was got real hungry when, when that was brought up by Olive. I'm just saying. I don't tell them anybody. I'm just smelling for it. Yeah, every now and again, you catch the smell of something that something delicious on the wind coming from the direction mm. of the town. Yum. And, and the population sign, it doesn't have like a number crossed out, and then another number written underneath, and then that crossed out, and another number. It looks, it looks like it's been pretty unchanged for quite a while. That, that's a good sign, guy. That's a good sign, guys, that the, the population has been remaining steady. I don't think we need a sky. I think we can just go right in. Charge. Hmm, that means someone sold them the potions. Mm. Okay, so as you, uh, as you amble in into the town, um, it's basically just a one-street town. Uh, it's very quaint. It's, uh, if you picture like a Swiss mountain village or something, um, looks like there's a bit of money in this town. Uh, you notice there's a modest, a modest town square, a few taverns, a blacksmith, um, what looks like it might be a hunting supply store, and then just next door to each other, um, two apothecary shops, um, one of which is boarded up, and the other one looks like it's been recently ransacked. Well, guys, I think this is what we've been looking for, though, these two shops right here. Well, let's let's see if we can determine anything by looking at it. Maybe a, a little analysis investigation, kind of a an assessment of what we see in this picture. Really focus in, kind of do a little Sherlock Holmes moment where we, we block off. Sherlock Holmes, a very famous, uh, I don't know if you know this, there's a very famous gnome uh, named Sherlock Holmes. Very famous. Anyway, I won't get into that. That's deriving off where we were going. But... I really want to focus in on doing a little uh, investigation, a little mental exercise to see what things I can deduct. Okay, so, so there if I hear you right, you just want to sit here and stare at it. That's pretty much what I want to do, yeah. <laughs> All right, we can do that. <laughs> okay, so uh, without needing to roll anything, you see these two uh, apothecaries. The one on the right um, looks like it was once a really beautifully appointed storefront um, with a beautifully hand-painted sign above it saying, Decanto Apothecary. 
Um, and the fittings on the front are all like polished mahogany. Um, there's really nice kind of um, like wooden rosettes carved in at the tops of the pillars either side of the door, uh, but it, it has been boarded up. Uh, on the left is um, an altogether much gaudier looking shop front for a potion shop. And it's got a huge flamboyant sign in kind of, I don't know, the D&D equivalent of, of Comic Sans. And it says, meniscus traditional potionery, finest in all the land. And then in the window um, are uh, special offers, some of which, have, most of which have been crossed off and then have like a smaller amount written, crossed off again. And there's, there's been, there, the prices have been dropping rapidly here. Um, but yeah, the, the front door is hanging off its hinges. Um, some of the... Some of the windows are broken and, you know, the, 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 the door is flapping a bit in the wind and you just, without having to think much about it, you can just look in and see that it has been ransacked as well. It looks like there's been a pathicory war here. See, these guys have been driving these guys out of business because of the lower and they have the price because they try to get that. And then they were like, you know what? No, we're going to make sure we close them. And they did because of the prices. And then in retaliation, they came back and they destroyed the other guy's shop. That is a clever hypothesis. Olive isn't a thinker herself. So she says, that sounds right. Well, and I know that the train driver has something to do with it. <laughs> I think your conspiracy theory is, is worth keeping in the back of our heads. And I like how you think. I do see that maybe a fire sale resulted in the second apothecary, the more gaudy meniscuses. Uh, but it is also possible that there's a third party involved here that was making potions that we can't see. And that the first one went on a business and they were a good and righteous place. And then the second one was trying to keep up with the free potions that were going out that were causing all this harm. And they had to go out of business and were ransacked. That's my guess. But I like your thinking, too. You girls are really going with me here. I love it. So mm -hmm. as you discuss all this, um, you see uh, a figure shuffling towards you up the main street. Um, he's got uh, it's uh, a gnome. He's got a tool belt and he's got under his arm uh, just a load of lumber and he's kind of muttering to himself and he pulls his, his cap down against the wind he, as he's making his way up towards um, the gaudier of the, the meniscus uh, potionery, uh, which is not yet boarded up. And uh, he kind of glances at you, you three, and, and he keeps on muttering, throws his lumber on the ground, oh, stretches it back, uh, pulls out a nail and a hammer and just goes about uh, the business of starting to board up the meniscus traditional potionery. Well, how do there, little guy? Uh, can you like tell us what's going on here? Uh, 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 yes, yes, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, been tasked with, uh, with boarding up uh, this, this, this potion shop, ransacked by goblins. You see, a terrible business, really. Rolled in a few weeks ago, throwing their weight around. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a stain on the, it's a stain on the, 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 the proud tradition of the Nimbin Potion Village. Olive holds up a tied up goblin in the window and rolls the window down, sort of like fancy lady style, where she's talking to someone from the height of the carriage. This goblin? <laughs> he drops his, his hammer and his nail. He's like, oh. It's tied up. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I can see that. I'm still, I'm, you have to forgive me. These are awful creatures. I've had some terrible goblin experiences. Where did, what, what happened? Where did you find this? Oh, I'm not injured anymore, so I can't just like point to the arrow wound um, <laughs> they attacked us on the road <laughs> i see did they indeed i jump down off the cot and i go over to help him board it up and i show him i pull down my blouse a little and show him the hole where i got hit by an arrow and i say it still hurts just a little Ooh, yes they are not they are nasty buggers um, um i I, I, do it, if I may be so bold, what business is this of yours? I, I know you're not residents of the town. We don't get many visitors up here. Well, you have a supply chain, and we're way down the supply chain path, and I don't want to get all caught up in that idea, but roughly we were sent here to figure out why all the potions aren't working the way they're supposed to. Oh, I, oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, customers, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, I, I, I can explain all, I, I suppose. I mean, we don't have a... Uh, we don't have much defenses in this town. I think generally it's the mountains and the fact that we're so uh, we're so remote is the reason we don't we don't suffer more attacks. But what seems to have happened have happened is that some goblins have set up camp somewhere in the in the in the crags nearby, 
Um, and out of nowhere, one night, they, they ransacked a uh, good friend of mine, uh, Flimby, Flimby DeCanto. They ransacked his potion. He really does make the finest potions in all the land, despite what uh, his, <laughs> his, uh, his competition would have you, have you believe. Um, yes, and then uh, uh, not long out, maybe two weeks, two weeks, and he disappeared. Flimby disappeared that night as well. We don't know where he's gone. It's very tragic. Um, and then two weeks later, uh, this exact same thing happened uh, with with uh, with Percy, with Percival Meniscus. Um, n- not as close a friend of mine, I shall say. He can be quite a difficult character, um, but he also makes relatively good potions. He makes good potions, not as good, not as good, but still better than your your average potion. Uh, as I say, Nimbin, we have uh, we have very good ingredients in in these regions. Uh, uh, that's basically all of it. Uh, I don't know if an envoy has been sent out to to try and uh, 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 get someone to take care of these goblins. But if, I mean, you, well, I was going to say, I don't see, I don't see, you don't have any weapons on you. This is very dangerous to be traveling around without weapons in these parts. I gently touch his arm as <laughs> if to convince him to calm down. I oh. say it's going to be okay. You feel, and I feel his muscles. Is he very strong? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's jacked for a gnome. Oh, you're such a strong one. <laughs> I think maybe you should come with us and help us, and maybe we can go take care of this. We could use the extra strength. And then I want to say this to you. Who tasked you with doing this? Because this seems very arbitrary that you weren't as good a friend to this person, but here you are doing this very kind thing. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of the village handyman. This stuff usually falls to me. But it was uh, our town master, Ollie. She, she, she sent me here. She's, her residence is up there if, if, if you want to talk to her. And he gestures to kind of the, the nicest building uh, in, off the town square. You've told us so many names. Tell us your name. Uh, uh, my name is Grieve. Grieve Mundlewart. Grieve? Yes. Mundlewart. That's a lovely name. Oh, thank you. And, 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 and uh, what's your name? <laughs> A good, good Tangible, woman. and I'm not a sir. I'm, I'm, I was hoping when I flashed you a little of my chest, you would notice that. But I see how it is. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, nah, there's too much hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 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 quite dark, and my uh, my eyesight is not what it used to be. No, no, no. I'm not offended. It's fine. Not everybody's into everybody. I get that. It's totally fine. Also, I will point out that I'm a happily married gnome. <laughs> and he looks around as if as if you know. And, did anyone and I'm a very that? pretty gnome. Everybody's got their thing. I'm not arguing. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you are a very pretty gnome. We don't get many, uh, many foreign gnomes in these parts. And um, I, I would say that maybe don't go flashing so much decolletage if you find yourselves in the, yourself in the tavern. Um, we have a lot, some lonely mine workers, and it would send them, send them into a tizzy. You'd be the talk of the town. Wash, tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I flashed Kaylee there. My bad. My it's bad. it's gr- grieve, grieve. Oh, grieves. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm but, so but, sorry. I'm but so yes, sorry. I, I don't know why that happened. I sorry. could I could use a wash. I could. Yeah, I've been doing handyman yes. stuff all day. I'm I sure could you could. Ah. But you're happily married, so we'll do that another time. That's well, it, fine. It, it, I, there, there are beautiful bathing facilities in a, in in, in <laughs> our own in our only tavern, uh, and you could probably find lodging for the night if. Uh, if you wanted to, you could definitely find lodging for the night. We don't get any visitors. Grieve, well, I have you... a question for you. Oh, yeah, well, of course. Did Percy Meniscus also go missing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They were both uh, kidnapped by the goblins, as far as I can tell. I, I can't think as to why, but... Yes. Hmm. Can you not think of as to why, because you don't speak goblin? Uh, well, I've got a little goblin, but... Um, oh, because we've I'm... got the perpetrator right here, oh, and I oh. again hold up the bag of onions. Goblin. <laughs> Yes, of course. I, uh, um, I no, mean, I, I don't can tra- speak I... goblin myself. I can, I can, tra- I can translate. I can attempt to translate. What would you like to say to them? Why did you steal Percy and Flimby away from Nimbin? That's a good let's, one to start. Let's with. get out. Let's get out of the elements first, Gwen. He brings you into into Percy's uh, uh, ransacked apothecary, um, and uh, and closes the door. And it's a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit nicer. Uh, okay. So the question was, wh- why did you? Uh, Cannot them. In my left hand, I'm carrying Goblin One. In my hmm. right hand, I'm carrying a Goblin that used to be okay. really big. And I've okay. also patted them down. I'd like to do an investigation check to remove sure. any potions from their person. Um, can you roll me um, two d12s, please? <laughs> 
A one and a two. Okay, on the first one, you found uh, three decomposing fish heads, <laughs> which gives you a clue as to the smell. Freshwater uh, fish heads, mountain fish lake heads, fish, and fish heads. Uh, on the other one, well, those maybe got eaten. On the other one, you just find a pocket of sand. <laughs> oh, a pocket of sand! I collect a little of that. I might need that. Well, you're welcome to add it to your character sheets. Um, so yeah, uh, he, he, he does his best to translate. Um, uh, tangible uh, gets the gist. Um, and yeah, this goblin isn't cooperating, doesn't want to talk. Oh no, well, that's unfortunate. Um, I bring out some food and I, I try to settle them comfortably. And I, is it heated in here? If it's not heated in here, it's heated in the carriage. Um, no, it's it's not heated, but it's a lot warmer than outside. Okay, so I, I get out some food and I offer them some food and I say to the translator, Grieve, I'm like, let's just be polite and reasonable here. Do you want something to eat? I'm sure you're hungry. Roll a persuasion check, please. Uh-oh, I don't do that very well. Well, you all know I got <gasps> medical grade herb in, in, in the carriage that we could... <laughs> Uh, one of the one of the goblins' uh, eyebrows raises when he hears the phrase "medical grade herb." <laughs> seems seems some things translate pretty well. Seventeen minus one is sixteen. Okay, um, yeah, he's uh, he's a little uh, hesitant at first, but seeing as he took all his fish heads, he's like, this, da, 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 and he snatches. Uh, what did you offer him? Food. Yeah, he snatches food and uh, stuffs his face with it, and uh, grieves. Says, it appears he wants some more. Well, first tell us, why did you take Flimby and Percy? Uh, Percy. Percy. <laughs> why did Flimby you take and Flimby Percy. and Percy? Okay, so there's a bit of back and forth, and he's like, oh, well, yes, okay, I, I, this makes sense. It, it looks like they have uh, taken, taken them both to their hideout and to force them to make potions, uh, which they are then trying to sell or just taking themselves. Okay, um... Can the goblin please make a constitution saving throw? Sure. Why? Because <laughs> I don't know the food is poisoned. <laughs> oh, is this food poisoned? I don't know that. <laughs> uh, where was this food from? This food is from a magical realm that we got transported to, and I was, like, eating food off the table, and I was like, this is delicious. And everyone was like, I'm going to let you eat that. I'm not going to eat that. So... I don't know, because I rolled like a 20 or something. Like, I don't know this is poisoned. Oh, okay. I've just been eating it. <laughs> is it magically poisoned or just poison poisoned? Poison poisoned? Poison poisoned. Okay, I was, uh, then I'll roll, with, I'll roll with advantage. Uh, so he gets a 13. Because goblins, you know, they eat all sorts of stuff. The goblin is also fine. This is just normal okay. food. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. As far as anyone's aware. I still don't know. <laughs> um, uh, uh, oh, it appears he wants some more food. Yeah, um, neither of us knows. So. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess he's rolling again then. Uh, yeah, Fifteen. No, um, it's just like a, a one. And like seventeen. You, you pass or you fail. Yeah. So that's this is why I don't know. <laughs> so like, yeah, he, he loves it. The goblins are now fighting each other for food, and uh, <laughs> yeah, one of them's trying to bite the other one's ear. Uh, one of them has taken a shit. You now realize at some point, um, the lovely upholstery on the inside of your um, of your cart is getting ripped by their claws. Um, one of them has knocked over one of the fish heads and kind of mashed it into the rug a bit, and you've just got this. These two goblin, goblins causing havoc inside your uh, inside your beautiful cart. I thought we were in the building. Uh, didn't we move into the cart? Are we still in the building? No. Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, so yeah, they're just uh, they're just making this ransacked um, apothecary a bit more ransacked. All right. So now that we have your trust, goblins, I say to grieve. So you're making the potions so that you can sell them. Yes. Okay. Whose idea was that? Um, they both kind of clam up a little bit and look at you. And they, they don't want to say, ma'am. They don't, it, they don't want to inform on their leader, it seems. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to defer to my friends. I got us this far. Well, here's the thing. Technically, we've already completed the job. Now all we do is go back and tell them they got to find a new supplier. So this is actually right now going to a second job. So who's going to pay us for the second job? Well, maybe we should go talk to the person that sent this lovely Greaves here 
to to board the place up. Sounds like they have a dedicated interest in finding out. And there's a person uh, that maybe wants to get these two apothecaries back in their jobs and away from the goblins because this is their reputation for their town. And maybe we could raise a small army and lead them. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to try to make them have to do an intimidation check. Is that okay? I'm going to make this into an intimidating moment, and I'm going to break a little into go to orcish. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, because we know Ollie, the town master, right, is concerned. That's correct. Ooh. That's right. So 21 is my role. I rolled a 19 plus 2 because I got some charisma, and I really become very intimidating at two and a half feet tall as a very powerful gnome wizard. Who they have felt and seen. Okay, the two goblins kind of grab each other, like hug each other. like They're really freaked out. Um, and they spill their guts, yeah. They tell you that their, uh, <laughs> their goblin shaman leader, Gobbo Nightface, has, um, uh, it was Gobbo all his plan. Uh, he plans to take over the world, uh, one village at a time. This is his first one. And um, they, uh, yeah, they... Uh, yeah, grief is like, and oh yeah, oh they're oh they're holed up in the old uh, the old dwarven mine, not too far from here. I can I can provide directions. Um, I, I, I yes, I, I really think you should you should talk to Ollie as well. Um, she she might be able to give you um, more comfortable lodgings than the inn, uh, seeing as you you'd be doing us a, a service, and you really should check in with the town master. I can I can introduce you if you like. Then we're left with the question of what to do with these little reprobates. What you got a jail, right? Throw them in jail. Try them for their crimes. Ugh. Yeah. Yes, I mean, yes, I suppose. I suppose. I mean, we well, we don't have a courthouse. We'd have to go to the, the nearest town. All right. Well, I suppose that's that's Ollie's uh, that's Ollie's department. I think it's very important to remember that justice is the key to any good civilization. And the way we participate in that particular activity is critical to the success of our relationships with each other. Wow. Very wise words. Very wise words indeed. However, I don't know if you've uh, ever tried to reason with a goblin before. I don't like to make sweeping generalizations, but... I've never had any success. I don't. I think criminal reform, when it comes to goblins, is uh, maybe just a little bit out of reach given the the resources we have. I, I'd love to discuss this with you further over an ale, but I, I I should be getting on with my work now and, and getting back to my wife. No, of course. I think that's a perfect thing. We probably need to take a break. We should probably get a good night's sleep before we invade anybody uh, or take on a big job. I totally get that. You're a very good man, Greaves. I like you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I try my best. And uh, he, he goes about um, hammering, uh, uh, boarding up uh, this apothecary. That concludes part one. Thank you for joining us. Olive Mudo. Bye. Tangible Dreams. Boy. And Dr. Crud the third. Well, it looks like we're going to pick up a second job. Let's get more money. <laughs> Yay, money. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. You can subscribe to receive new episodes through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com or finding us on YouTube. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please, share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you. You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. That's right, you can curl up with a good book based on one of our podcast episodes. The authors do a really great job of adapting them into fun novels. And did you know that we have webcomics? Look for the adventures of Firebreathing Kittens on webtoons.com. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Yes, that's right. You really can own a notepad with the Firebreathing Kitten logo on the front. Uh, while we're just getting ready, I, I, I did want to talk a bit about this, uh, but I didn't get a chance. Um, I, just the party that we have is not very tough. Um, and I designed this uh, adventure kind of agnostic of whoever was playing it. Um, so I'm not out to kill your characters. I will say that um, there are situations that might be perilous or deadly to them if they don't, if they don't act, uh, if they don't take them seriously. 
Uh, and apologies in advance if anyone's character dies. That's not what I'm going for. But, um, you know, we have a pacifist and we have someone with an armor class of nine. Uh, and we have a monk. So a squishy party. A squishy party. So apologies in advance. Total if I party kill. Character. kill. Total party Could kill. I, I've never killed a character. Hug all kill. the monsters. Hug all the monsters. Oh, boy. Welcome back to the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. This is part two. Let's get one of our players to give us a recap. I'm going to roll a dice. Uh, I've rolled d20. I've got a 12. So if everyone could roll me a d20, and whoever gets closest will do the recap. I got a nine. So did I. Can I choose to have an eight? <laughs> um, no, you may not. It's not how this rolling thing works. <laughs> what on your character sheet lets you do that? Have you got luck points? What's happening? You don't have any inspiration. I got inspiration. So do I, actually. Oh, do you have inspiration? I do. Too? Oh, I love that. That's so lovely. Okay. I, I think it's Olive, then. I got a 10. <laughs> Yay, Olive! Yeah, oh, yeah, Olive, yeah. Olive, I'm so excited for you. Let's see how much attention you were paying. <laughs> At least I've written down these names. All right, so... Tangible Dreams, Dr. Crud III, and Olive Mudo. I guess I'll do this recap out of character. Okay. We're in the Fire Breathing Kittens Hall when Callow Copper Coil, a potion maker, was quite upset that their potions were working a bit too well. People were stuck on the ceilings. People were sticking to stuff they've touched. People were too strong. It was all a mess. So Callow Copper Coil asked us to go to Nimbin, a gnomish village in the mountains, to see if we could figure out why the potions weren't ending when they were supposed to end. After a scuffle with goblins who attacked us on the way here and perhaps explained a bit of why things were not working properly, we saw that Decanto Apothecary, owned by Flimby Decanto, and Meniscus Traditional Potionary, owned by Percy Meniscus, had both been ransacked, and both potion makers had gone missing there's a two-week gap between Flimby and Percy going missing. Ollie, the town master, is aware of this problem and has asked Grieve Mundelwert, a handyman gnome who is happily married and not interested in tangible, <laughs> to board up the potion-making shops and try to clean up the mess, but seems to have no interest in hunting down the goblins that caused this, so this is where we step in. We have the goblins. And we can talk to them through Grieve. The goblins have now told us that Gabo Knife Rest? Night Face. <laughs> Gabo Night Face. Sounds lovely. Knife Face. <laughs> night, night, They're... like day and night. Oh, Night Face. Like the darkness outside that quenches no thirst. <laughs> Gabo Night Face, the goblin leader, wants to take over the world and is holed up in a dwarven mine outside of town. So that's the information that we've collected. I return it to my better accented companions. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, you find yourselves um, having gotten some good information. You've got um, two tied, two restrained goblins and um, instructions as to where the Ten Masters Hall are, is. It's those tenses that kill you. Mm, mm. Just trying to live in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess it's time to go talk to the town master, see if uh, he's going to hire us for this uh, new job of uh, getting those people back. Ollie will have all the answers. He or she, whatever that she. may be. She. I thought so, too. Yeah. Well, we have to wait and see what they identify as, as when we go meet them. That's fair. Okay, so you roll up to the town master's hall. Um, uh, you knock on the door, and it kind of sways open a jar. And you see in front of you in the atrium um, two people, um, a female gnome who is consoling a male gnome. And she's like, there, there, there. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll sort something out. Who, he hello, I'm sorry. We're, clo we're closed. Oh, visitors. Pardon me a second. Hello, my name is Ollie Chindlebrook. I'm the, I'm the town master. How can I help you? Well, we... Ollie, I got to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Crud no, III. You please, you what? go first. No, no, please. Oh, I got no. this. I got this. Ollie, right, please let me introduce the one and only, the most incredible, Dr. Crud III of the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild. <laughs> Ooh, I applaud. Woo! <laughs> uh, she looks pretty impressed. She's like, 
Ooh, adventurers and a doctor. We don't get many of your kind around here. You know, um, I may have a job for you. Uh, the, the town has fallen afoul of some nasty little goblins. First they went after our potion masters, and now they've taken my friend's children. Can you believe it? <gasps> uh, uh, they took children? Yes, they in 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 in, in just earlier tonight they, they they broke into my friend here, my friend Shep. In, they, and Shep is just inconsolable in the corner, sitting on a little stool. Um and, and yeah, they they took his children away. And we, we really need to do something about this. Um you look like you can and she's kinda of looking to see if you're Um I mean you look the part, I don't see any weapons. All our weapons are up here. And he taps on his head. You ain't gotta worry about that. But they took the children. We will take the job. We'll talk, discuss payment later, because we got to go get those kids. Oh, may the gods bless your souls. What, what a wonderful bunch. Um, my intel, I say intel, it was Dave told me. Um, we think they're in the dwarven mine. It's, it's, it's just in the way I can give you directions. And she starts scrawling on a bit of vellum. And, uh, well, I, exactly I don't want to upstage Dr. Dr. Crud, but I do want to let you know, we've determined a few things too. We've spoken to Greaves. Oh, yes. And we did a little interrogation and we know that Gobbo Knight face... I don't know if you know of It's not a name that partic- means anything to me. Okay. Well, well, we're pretty sure this is the one that has taken over and has taken all the children and taken the apothecaries. And in case anything happens to us and we should die and not make it back, <laughs> I want you to know you should have as much information as we do at this point. It sounds like they're making potions and they're very bad. And this can cause them harm as well as others. And so even as bad as it is for you, downstream, it's affecting people there. So either you fix it or bad things could happen to Nimbus. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel like I've let down the entire town. Not just the town. It's the entire world. Oh, Yeah, that must feel pretty crappy. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it must suck. His head exploded. (laughs) Who's what? Whose head exploded? What's this now? I go back to the carriage and I hold up my two onion bags of goblins. Their friend's head exploded because of you. Because of me from drinking a potion? Oh, Oh, may the gods save us. People keep saying that we need a militia, but I'm, I'm, I'm a pacifist myself. I don't, I don't like, I don't like blood and guts, but when goblins come along, they're leaving us with very little choice. Well, well, look at that. I'm a pacifist, too, but I still figure out how to get things done. And speaking of these goblins, they need to go to jail. So if you could go ahead and handle that, we'll leave them here with you. I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw him. I'll throw him in the in the dungeon downstairs, but I have to figure out what to do with them after that. Uh, yeah. Sounds like you need a justice department. Maybe that's something we could consult with you on for a fee at a later <laughs> date. I have a little experience in how to distill justice. I- <laughs> I'm I'm in over my head here. I'm in over my head. That would be wonderful. I really hope you survive. <laughs> For that reason and because you, you seem like a decent bench. Oh, <laughs> mercy. Thank you. You seem decent too. And I'm sorry Sanders over there is struggling. I, I totally wish I could do something to console them. I, I have an idea. This is going to help a lot. And Dr. Craig goes over there and embraces them. Aww. Uh, nothing like a hug. It seems to be helping. It seems to be helping. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, Ali, Ali sets you up with uh, lodging for the night, suggesting that um, uh, attacking goblins at night isn't a great idea and that you should probably go first thing in the morning. They tend to be nocturnal. Um, unless you have any... any. Uh... Uh, okay, I would like to ask Grieve to ask the goblins if goblins eat children. I think that's an important thing we should ask. Before we wait. <laughs> so what you're saying is it could be an exigent situation and the stakes could have just been raised because the children could be being turned into a potion or still right now. And I say this yeah. very loudly in front of Saunders and Ollie. <laughs> Shep. Dr. Yeah. Crud gives you a, a, a look, a shut your mouth look. <laughs> uh, the goblins look scandalized. They look really uh, taken aback by this. Um, and they chat away with Grieve, and Grieve turns back, and he's like, no, 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 they're, 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 they're not allowed to eat these children because um, they're using them as uh, 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 guinea pigs for the potions. <gasps> Their head exploded! <laughs> this is even more exigent. 
<laughs> well, not necessarily. One of them could take like a strength potion and then they're going to get all hulky like that one did and then just tear their heads off. And while I don't agree with murder like that, they're, you know, it may benefit the kids to do that. At this point, Chef Chef is just rolling around in tears. Uh, <laughs> oh, my son's head! My son's head's getting sprayed! It would be character building for the children, and, and they'd feel like an understanding. They'd learn something from that experience. <laughs> Baby's first stab. <laughs> and besides, I can't see in the dark. So, I mean, I'd, I'd be even more useless. Um, I... I I would like to ask Tangible, I mean, Tangible, how are you doing? Do you feel up for a rescue mission in the middle of the night? Well, I want to say I'm down a couple of spell slots and I don't think I'm at my best and I definitely need to do some skincare. So I, I think a good night's rest and uh, maybe a mani-pedi before I leave and then I'd be ready to go. Does Shep just start crying when he hears that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, he's, he's kind of wailing and crying, covered in so much snot that he's not even taking in new information now. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Well, I'm fully healed and ready to go. And I, I feel like there's children whose heads might explode. So personally, <laughs> Olive kind of wants to go now. I mean, um, is there any way that we can, like help you rest up a bit on the way if we put you in the back of the carriage? I walk over to Olive. I put my hands as high up towards his shoulders as possible and try to look her directly in the eyes when I say this. Death is real. People die no matter what we do or how well we do. All over the world, the reality is life and death happens every minute of every day. And you, as amazing as you are, Cannot stop it. At this point, Ollie is given a like, uh, <laughs> stop, stop talking hand movement. Like, will you shut up? This poor man's just lost his children. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. His like, children are dead. I, I got something for this. Here you go, Shep. And Dr. Craig gives him uh, some, some, what looks like a, a, a little bag of herb. This will help calm you down. This is medical grade, so it's all good. Um, I can also offer you a couple of healing potions. Uh, I, I can give you a healing potion each, if that would help. Well, that uh, depends. Is it the good stuff, <laughs> or is it the stuff that might blow your head up? This is from my yeah. private stash. This is uh, this is Flimby Decanto. This is his this is his best stuff. And he he hands out he holds out these three vials and uh, special concentrated versions, and they're just these tiny little circular vials with little corks. And it's like that's as strong as any healing potion you'll find. But look out! Look out! He really is a genius, Flimby. I hope he's. Oh, I hope he makes it out okay. Oh. So yeah, you've all got three uh, ordinary. Each got a, a ordinary healing potion now. Doctor Crud but, uh, will hand his over to Olive, since uh, you know Olive's the one that you know almost died last time. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. I'm just distrustful of potions in general, so I raise an eyebrow. <laughs> Besides, I got these these five others. Yeah, no, don't drink those. Um, so oh, they're gonna get drank. If my head explodes, it head it, it explodes. <laughs> okay, so without any backup, I don't want to go alone. I have a history of playing volleyball in high school. I'm used to team sports. I'm not like able to take down a goblin mine shaft on my own. So if Tangible's not in on going then I, I'm i going to give you, like, a dirty look and judge you, but I'm not going to go by myself. <laughs> like, going to be like, if these children are dead, it's your fault. But I can't do it alone. Here you go. You can have my potion, too. I totally understand. Oh, no, you're going to need that because we're going to go into this mine in the morning. So yeah, no, I understand. You hold on to that potion in case something happens in the middle of the night and we get attacked. I'm going to go take a nice nap and then I'm going to find out if there's a spa in town. And we're going to get some care products for your skin because it's cold up here. And we're going to take care of you. I'm going to leave the potion with you. Like, I just won't take it. <laughs> Self-care is very important. You need to prioritize. Put your own mask on first. Olive doesn't have a very good impression of Tangible's um, altruism. So, unless there's any anything more you need to do or discuss, uh, we can smash cut to the next morning as you set out. Um, 
with your crudely but accurately drawn vellum map, um, which basically leads you back to the point at which you were ambushed and then just up a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah it's, it's quite easy to find. Um, so yeah, you find yourself now at the ambush site. Is there anything, anything you'd like to do before you proceed? I want to take one of the goblins with me. Okay. But completely prevent them from talking. Like, bind up their mouth. Okay. Yeah. K- kidnapper exchange? They've got captives. We've got captives. We've got two goblins. They've got two question mark children. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Well, we have one goblin. They have four people, two children and two, two apothecary people. So we we got two goblins. We got two. We can take well, both of them, I guess. Yeah. If that's the intent, but that's a lot to manage. That is. Do we just hide them somewhere, get their names? Well, uh, oh, they, tell us something that only you would know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could use them as bargaining chips, but I think they should remain in the dungeon. Okay, all right. So in the dungeon, I'm going to ask them for some personal information, like just hang out with them. Because apparently I've got all night because I'm not rescuing children. So <laughs> We could probably take their ears, too. You know, ears are very distinct. Oh, gosh. No, we, we're not. We're not separating not the ears the from ears? their heads. Okay, no. well, that's fine. That's fine. Tangible. <laughs> that's totally fine. I understand. Tangible. Everybody's got their own comfort levels. TD, we're going to have to have a long discussion when we get back to the guild. <laughs> You, okay, get, so you get a nice necklace going, you know, if you <laughs> talk to a few of them. You can string them together and wear them. Yeah, look here. I got some right here. See? <laughs> so while Tangible was having a spa night, can I have spent the night with the goblins getting, like, their names and... <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you stay up uh, with the goblins. I mean, they're awake because uh, that's, that's what they do. Um I think someone's got to watch them in the jail, so I'll... So, someone has to translate, though, right? Yeah. I like the erotic fan fiction that's going to come out of my night in the goblin dungeon. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> the night I slept in the goblin dungeon with the goblins. That's the next well, adventure. So, Grieve could translate before. I, I'll ask him if he's willing to stay. But, yeah, I don't speak goblin. I, I just want to know, like, what's your name? What's your middle name? <laughs> what town was your mom born? <laughs> What's your first pet's name? <laughs> Would your friends even care if you came back? They may not value life the same ways we do. It might not work, but I just want to know. Okay, one of the goblins is called Grack, and the other one is called Spork. And they don't seem to have a whole lot of personal information. It's like, one of them is like, oh, I really like uh, fish heads. Um, the other one says he likes uh, sucking the insides out of grubs and then eating the skin and... People think, you know, people complain about that, but that's just, you know, that's just who he is. Um, they both like uh, long walks through dark caves. Um, they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, and uh, really, they're both just looking for a partner in crime, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but, but when, when, they're, when they're like, they've, they start, they, they're curious as to why you want all this information. And they find out, and they're oh, like, "They're just having a slumber party." And they're like, "Oh, do, 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 do you do you tell them?" You're like, "They're like, why are you trying to get to know us?" I think that if you really visit a place and meet the people, it's hard to commit acts of war against them. Did that answer confuses them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're, you're back at the ambush site. Um, there's no one lining up an ambush currently. Now, Olive, don't you feel better now that he had some rest before doing this? I bet you feel a whole lot better. Exactly the same. I feel <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> I rolled a natural 20 on my survival roll, giving me a 21 total to see if I can track where we're supposed to go. Uh, yeah, you can very easily uh, you find you find a path um, up the embankment um, through some crags. Uh, over some rocks, under a little archway of rocks, until you come to a clearing, uh, which you can tell um, in the morning light uh, used to be the grand entrance to an ancient dwarven mine, um, but it's now mostly overgrown. And I did want to see if I could determine anything about the occupants, number, type, uh, if I could tell what race or what type of creature they might be. Anything I can discern from this effort. So you wrote, you got a, was it a nat 20 you got? It was a nat 20 on a survival, but I only got a plus one. So it's, you know, yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, okay. So uh, with a 21, um, you can tell that, um, yeah, this cave entrance is in regular use. You see recent um, goblin footprints. Um, you see uh, the wheels from a small cart, tracks from that. Um, and yeah, you can tell that um, there have been some relatively heavily laden carts have recently uh, come and gone from here. Can I propose something to you all? Absolutely. Sure, okay. if you want to propose, go ahead. <laughs> Mines always have air shafts. Yeah. Vertical holes, tunnels through the ground that lead into their interior. Okay. Front doors are always more guarded than windows. That, that makes a lot of sense. Here's my problem, though. I'm not very athletic. That's okay. We have rope. And the easiest direction to go is straight down. Right, and when you impact the ground, it hurts. You found that out last it's night. It's easy to go, though. It's very easy to go. You just, boom, right down. I have ten pittons, which I learned recently are used for making a secure connection between a rope and a, a stronghold and are perfect for going straight down via a rope without impacting the ground at high velocity. Well, I believe the term is repel. Yeah. So I'm all for trying to repel down. Well, wouldn't that make a lot of noise as you hammer it into the uh, the stone? Hundreds of feet above. So on the surface, I would put the piton, and then the rope would go down through the mine shaft, down below. Hundreds of feet? You got enough rope for hundreds of feet? 50 feet. And often these mine shafts are, are made with like wooden walls that are very easy to... I can go first. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, in that case, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now... Am I correct in remembering that you can't see in the dark? I cannot see in the dark. Oh, you know dark. what? I, I got these potions. Maybe one of them will let me see in the dark. Let me, uh, I'm going to drink one right now. I say the word no and cannot physically stop you from <laughs> drinking a potion on your person. <laughs> like, I'm too far away. Well, let's see if this... I no. can't wait to see what happens here. This is going to be fun. Well, let's see Neither I can, can I. See the dark. <laughs> um, are you taking a potion? Absolutely. New York, New York. Here we go. Okay, can you roll a D100 for me, please? Oh, it could be a teleportation potion. You could be any. Oh, maybe it's a shape shift, and then you could just <laughs> slither it down. Well, it could be one of a hundred things. 74. Oh, it could be a wish spell. Oh, that'd be lovely. I mean, I guess I haven't. <laughs> okay, you rolled a 74? Yes. Okay. Oh, I love it. So this potion has a bubbling, bloody texture. And you have a sudden urge to go to the privy, to use the little elephant's room, as it were. Um, so you rush into the nearest bush. Um, you're inca incapacitated briefly. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm not going to use the wording that they use here. Um, but you find you just get the strangest sensation you've ever had, um, as if you've just been at a feast all weekend and you've been backed up and uh, you deposit not what you would expect to come out of that end of a male elephant, but what you find is a huge, like, bigger than a football-sized egg, white egg with green spots on it. You laid an egg? Oh my gosh! You I laid so an excited. egg. And you feel great afterwards. You feel so relieved. Dr. Crud comes out of the bush holding an egg going, well, in all my years of medical training... <laughs> WTF. As I unstop my potion, I am so excited about <laughs> laying an egg that I just drink my potion down and I roll a 60. 60. I don't know if that's modified by anything, but I am just, I am excited. While he looks that up, I, I will say that Dr. Crud does go into the carriage. He has an incubator in there. And he, that's where he places the egg. Wow. Okay. Uh, tangible. <laughs> Uh, you knock back that potion. It's got a distinctly minty flavor to it, and it leaves your breath oh. feeling minty fresh. Uh, oh, lovely. However, um, it doesn't really agree with you, with your stomach. And uh, for the next half an hour or so, your stomach hurts a little bit. It's not You're not poisoned or anything. It's just like you feel a bit unwell, and you get the feeling that you weren't really meant to swallow that, but maybe just like gargle and spit. <laughs> oh, well, live and learn. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. So that was your potion? She drank Listerine. That was my potion. <laughs> yeah. Minty fresh. I, I breathe on everybody. 
Hey, Olive, I got uh, I got some more. You want to try one? <sighs> well, while you decide, I'm going to drink another one. I want to see if I get another egg. Miscability. <laughs> Here we go. That's an 11 for uh, the second one. <laughs> Lower is always better. I love when it's low. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you roll a d4, please, Dr. Oh. Chris? Two. Right down the middle. Okay, you are you are drooling uncontrollably for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your drool and I say, I'm good. Don't you like my drool? I pull a little handkerchief out of my sleeve from underneath my blouse. And I walk up and I reach up as high as I can to wipe the drool. But I just can't get that high. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and while you're under there, it, I imagine it's coming out quite a bit. And you, you probably just got slobbered on. Little slobber never killed anybody. I, I mean, I, I, if Ov's not going to have one, I think I'm going to save my last three for later. Maybe one while we're in there and then the two on the way back. I'll even let TD have one. <laughs> and now you firsthand know what the children are going through. Oh, the poor children. It's actually pretty awesome. They got to lay eggs, maybe. This could be awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to see what it hatches into. Could be anything. Can I do a survival check to try to, like, walk around and, and not get lost and see if I come across a mine shaft? Yeah. Air shaft? Yeah. I'm not very good at survival, so let's see how this goes. Oh. Nine? Did I just find one the fun way? <laughs> um, I was going to say, I could assist you. I you got some skill in this area. You oh, please help me. Please help me. Yes, for okay, sure. Okay, With the help action, I can... Can I mm-hmm. roll twice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. 21. 21. Okay. That's um, way better than what you rolled. So uh, in rolling 21, you try to explore around a bit, um, and you come to the conclusion pretty quickly that this is the only way in. Now, um, what this is, is when I say, like, uh, a a mine, this is kind of like a stronghold that contains a mine. So um, there's kind of like a giant kind of archway entrance, and that's all overgrown. Um, And with your 21, you can kind of peek through that and see that if you go through the undergrowth or the overgrowth, um, you will come into a large kind of an atrium, um, uh, which oh, is no, 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 no. I would not. <laughs> no, no, no. But you can you can see that with yeah. your twenty one. Uh, okay. What, what you do see in there um, is you see a large, huge, dub- like stone double door um, in the center. Uh, the atrium is kind of dimly lit by this um, kind of glowing, eerie blue light coming from some uh, bioluminescent fungus dotted around the the cave walls and ceilings. And uh, over to the left is a large pile of rubble where there's been something of a cave-in. This is thousands of years old. There looks like there's been various cave-ins. And, um, yeah, it's it's kind of difficult ground, you know. It, it does, it's well past its former glory. But you don't see any vertical mine shafts going down anywhere. Nor any other entrances. Hmm. So I report back to you guys. There are no air holes. So the only way for us to possibly separate this group out so that we don't have to fight every single goblin in this place at once, because if we walk in the front door, they're going to sick all their guards on us, right? So the only possible way for us to not fight them all, since we can't stealth from behind, would be to wait for a cart to come out, follow them down the road a bit, and then take on those three, maybe, at once. Otherwise, we're going to have to fight every single goblin in this place at once. Like, do you guys have any other ways that we could not fight everyone at once well do you see anybody there no because they're all in like the kitchen inside you know or the dining room like 20 of them having a good meal you know all ready to hulk out with one of those potions <laughs> well we also know that they're nocturnal so they might be all asleep except for maybe one or two short straw guys that that gotta stay up all day it's possible yeah as you say this you notice that uh uh, which goblin did you bring with you? Was it Grack or Spork? Neither, because they talked me into leaving them in the jail cell. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay, okay. And as you did, they were both curling up to go asleep for the day. Did I get any information about how many friends they have? Uh, yeah. Uh, they said it varies, but uh, it varies from about five to ten. Uh, and then they started talking about um, uh, recruitment uh techniques and stuff and they they both had very different opinions on this and they got into a little bit of a fight over it um Hmm. yeah you're not sure yeah so if three almost killed us (laughs) five to (laughs) ten well no three almost killed you yeah i was fine 
Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to do a little more investigation and see if I can see uh, where I would post gods and where I would do uh, a setup if I was running an encampment like this and everybody was asleep and what watch we would be on for them and just kind of do the math in my head of what I would be doing if I was a goblin setting up this space and protecting it and putting up gods and all that kind of stuff. Okay, roll it up. Okay. I got uh, a 17 on the die, and then if you're saying investigation would work, I'm going to say plus three, so 20. Yeah, okay. So uh, 20 uh, gets you a decent bit of information. Um, uh, you also cautiously approach uh, where Olive had, had peeked through this bit of, bit of hedges, and you see much in the same thing. Um you uh, you see exactly where you would put a guard, um, uh, but there doesn't appear to be one there. So uh, there's a huge, um, a huge double stone door that I described, and as you investigate, you see that there's um, a large gargoyle statue either side of it, quite men menacing-looking gargoyle statue. Um, you also can tell that. Do you have uh, dark vision, or as a gnome? I I believe I do have dark vision. I believe. Uh... I'm looking that up right now, but I'm pretty sure I do have some dark vision. Dark well, vision BR37. You can see in darkness shades of gray up to 60 feet. Beautiful, yeah. So uh, you can quite easily see that, um, you know, while all this uh, granite stonework is very old and, and kind of worn away and covered in lichens and moss, that these gargoyles don't look as old or as moss covered. Um, you also notice... Um, uh, in the big pile of rubble over to the left, the kind of cave into the left, um, it looks like there's a path through there, um, also dimly lit by fungus. So if we were to take that alternate path off to the side, could we avoid the gargoyles who seem to be possibly really gargoyles and not just statues? You don't know. You don't know that. Oh, okay. All but right. uh, you, could, you could physically avoid them. Uh, like, you wouldn't have to pass between them to go that way. That does seem wise. Okay, that could be real, real, uh, I could burn a spell slot and detect some magic and see if these things are real. That might or might not work. I'm not an expert in that particular determination. But the, uh, that does sound like the wisest, because if these are real gargoyles, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> well, you got to be within 30 feet of them before you can do that spell. I, I could do that, too. Hey, could well, could one, one or both of you roll me an arcana or a nature check, please? Sure. For sure. Oh, jeez. I got an 18. Okay, an 18 tells you that um, what you know about gargoyles is that they're actually not magical per se. They're elementals. And you know that your detect magic spell wouldn't be able to tell if these are s stone statues or elemental, earth elemental gargoyles. Well, in that case, we should just avoid them as much as possible, yeah? Well, I, I got an idea how we can figure out whether they're stone or not. We'll go hide in the bush over there. We'll throw a rock at them, and if it bounces off of them and they don't get no reaction, then they're 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 actual stone. But if it does get a reaction, then we have two gargoyles on us. Well, <laughs> no, we're in the we're in the bushes. They don't know where it came from until they come over and check. And um, what did you roll uh, uh, for your nature check, Crud, or your? Oh, it was survival. much lower than okay. Than okay. Him. okay. It would have no new information. <laughs> sure, sure. Is I, there a, like, hmm, how do I phrase this? Can I possibly climb up the, like, I don't know what the terrain looks like, but if there's, like, a, a way I could vertically drop onto anything, like, coming out? Like, let's say the cart comes out of the entrance and then it goes along a mountain pass a little bit to get onto the road. Can I set an ambush for like a few hundred feet away from the cave entrance perhaps out of gargoyle sensing range but somewhere where the cart would definitely have to go before it reached a turn uh, you absolutely could yeah there's just one path that's about wide enough for a medium-sized cart so they've only got really one way to go so you could do that yeah hey guys how do you feel about hiding above the path that a cart would have to take and just like hanging out for a while since you don't care about these children Everybody dies. So let's just let the children suffer, and we'll just h hang out here. And then when the cart comes out, we can drop on it and cut the number of goblins down by like three. Well, we never they've... said we didn't care about the children. <laughs> but they've got to be getting worried about their friends who didn't come back from their ambush point, right? So they're on high alert right now. Well, that 
again, you're, we're making assumptions. We don't even know whether they care about these guys or not. Okay, but they got to go outside sometime, right? So even if they're not on a high alert, like they they probably will take this path at some point. But it'll probably be the night, not right now. So we could be sitting here all day and losing our daylight while they're asleep. So I think the element of surprise is on our on, in our favor right now if we uh, do venture in. I think venturing in is the right thing to do. It's just a question of can we do it without alerting these gargoyles or setting off any glyphs or traps and those types of things. And I don't think we're really accustomed to figuring out traps. Is that correct? I point to my friend, the Loxodon, who looks not dexterous at all. He, with every step he takes, the elephant foot smashes down on the ground with an audible thump. <laughs> you want to find traps with Dr. Crud the Third. <laughs> no, I want to avoid them. I, I, I find them really easily, usually when I set them off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean... Well, look, the children are getting tortured. You want to save the children. We can't wait till nightfall. Well, and what are you going to tell the Mr. Sanders when you get back and say you spent the entire day waiting and hoping that somebody would come out and nobody came out for three days? I just spent 10 hours waiting for you to go to the spa. <laughs> I got my Manny Petty. I'm ready to go. And I can cast three additional spells I couldn't cast yesterday. So I can theoretically hurt more goblins than I could have yesterday. And you look you look magnificent as well. <laughs> and it was night when you wanted to go. You wanted to go when it was night, which is very dangerous. I have torches. It's not that big a deal. Um, what? Okay. Uh, if you want to go inside, we can go inside. Well, you know what? I will go first. I'm the one with no, the chain mail. No, yes, no. I will go first. I'm the one with the chain mail. Okay. All right. Fine. I will go first because this is the only logical way for us to enter <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> No, I think it's I think it's totally acceptable that clerics go first in their chain mail and are big and tough and can do these things. Totally fine. I light a torch. We'll let the alligator be afraid and stay in the back. It's fine. You stay behind me, honey. I'll take care of you. I'm not afraid. I'm a monk. If you want a barbarian, that's a barbarian. <laughs> I have the correspondence school that sends me training letters on how to be a monk and they they tell me things like <laughs> Set up ambushes and use your stealth. You're not a barbarian. You know, you can't learn to punch from a book. You know that, honey, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miyagi taught me that. No, but you can learn how to dodge. <laughs> you can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a book. That's you right. Dodge Dip, dodge, duck, dodge. Yeah. So uh, I will go first. I have a torch lit because literally otherwise I will walk into walls. Uh, before before you light a torch, I'll point out that you can see uh, pretty well because of uh, the the fungus, the luminescent fungus, um, and you can light a torch if that runs out. But for now, you actually don't really need it. You can kind of see oh. as if you had dark vision. Okay, yeah. hey, I'm gonna. And, and I also have the spell light that I can use all the time, so I could just light you up. Don't even worry about that. Doesn't that take up a spell slot? Nope. No, it's cantrip. Oh. Okay. Us wizards have cantrip abilities too all right well i will if <laughs> tangible has pointed out the gargoyles <laughs> to me which i don't know if she will or not who knows oh, of course i told you about <laughs> okay. the i specifically said we should avoid them all right was well, very I'm clear. Walk away from them on the far end like as far away from them as i can and i would like to do a stealth check while i climb the walls with you know, like I, I don't have like spider climb or anything, but what, what, what are you? What's the intent of your climbing? Mission Impossible style sneaking. Okay. Um. All right. It's it's not going to be any sneakier if you climb along a wall, but you can if you want. It might avoid any traps on the main part of the floor. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm walking. Okay. Stealth roll. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we can clear that chin. 22. 22. Uh, yeah, you do an incredible job of, um, of uh, bouldering along the side, uh, uh, mere feet off the ground, uh, but avoiding, uh, you know, in case it magically turns into hot lava or something like that. Um, yeah, and you get as far as the rubble, uh, which you see has like um, a clear enough kind of path through it that looks roughly the size of like, I don't know, an average kind of loxodon male. Um, and is lit with, uh, yeah, this fungus I described. Could you roll um, a, a nature check, please? 
Oh, uh, oh, okay. 15 on the dice, plus zero. Okay, as you approach the fungus, uh, you realize that you recognize it as um, a mildly hazardous form of fungus, uh, known colloquially where you're from, a sleep fungus. And you know that if you inhale the spores from this, it'll make you pass out for a while and make you quite sick. Oh, I use hand motions to my friends who are a little bit behind me. And I point to my eyes and I point to the fungus and I do a horizontal back and forth motion beneath my neck. And then I hold my nose <laughs> and I repeat that a few times. And then I take out a shiny golden material that is my gold backless ball gown. And I pour some water on it from my rations and I tie it around my mouth and my nose in a possibly futile attempt to <laughs> decrease my risk of breathing in harmful spores. You know, a lot of people would uh, would give you guff for packing a backless gold ball gown for a, an adventure into the mountains, but it seems to do the job. Um, as you've heard about this, all you need to do is like, yeah, just a wet rag around the face um, and you're probably fine. Uh, maybe try to breathe a little shallower. Um, so yeah, that, that seems to be working for you. Um, yeah, would you like to continue stealthing through the rubble, through the kind yeah. of tunnel of rubble? Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you do so, um, you find uh, yourself um, in what I suppose I'd describe it as, it's like a gigantic rock has been split diagonally and you're in the split, you know, that's what the tunnel is. Um, as you stealth your way in, um, uh, you find you find yourself, it opens out into um, a chamber, um, about the same size as the, um, or a bit bigger than the entrance hallway. Um, and it's a, you know, a chamber that's partially natural, partially carved out of the rock. Um, and it is a jail. Um, up along one side, you see three, three cells. And on the other side, you see three cells. Uh, this room is also just about adequately lit by a blue bracket fungus. Most of it kind of out of the way, so you can take, take the thing off your face now. Um, yeah, and um, so there are these six jail cells. Um, and you don't see a jailer, and there's an exit at the far end. I would like to leave the backless ball gown on my face in case I have to make a quick exit. Mm -hmm. And... I just want to stay there for like five minutes and observe because I'm, if my friends can still see me, I tell them like a horizontal hand and a vertical hand and I make a T motion and I'm like, time out, just chillax. So I immediately move to her uh, <laughs> going stealthily to try to get an interpretation of what she's saying there. And I roll a 19 on my stealth, which oh, gives gosh. me a 18 getting there. And I get right up next to and sneak in behind my alligator friend. And I lean in and I said, what? Did you what? die to the fungus before you? <laughs> Do you have a oh. rag across your mouth? No. <laughs> uh, roll a nature check, please, to see if you knew that. Uh, um, I rolled a two. Okay. Um, my, my plus five is a seven. Would you like to roll to see if, if you could interpret uh, Olive's uh, warnings? If you understood them or not? Oh, sure. I would okay. say perception check. Oh, yeah. I totally understood she was saying, make sure you cover your face. Yeah. So did you cover your face? I did. Of course. I Great. covered my face. Great. <laughs> just just trying to keep you all honest. Um, no, it's totally true and fair. I Yeah. So I still whisper, what? What did you say? I face palm a little bit, which is... And then I, I rub my temple and I say... You need a in massage, the, honey. In the quietest possible voice that I can. We're going to wait here for a second to see what the situation is. Oh, okay. And you want me to whisper? Don't move. Whisper okay. and just hang okay. out for a second. Sure. Okay. I'll hide right here. And then I hide. Yeah. How many prisoners are there? Okay, as your eyes adjust a little better to the light, you see that in the nearest... Um, so to the right, uh, you make out two hunched little figures in a corner and you hear like a little sobbing, sobbing noise. Um, this appears to be where the kids are. Okay. There's stuff in the other cells. Would you like to investigate? What would you like to do? I want to climb up onto the ceiling and make a stealth check and wait for a person to enter the room and go directly beneath me and then plummet onto their head with my feet. Okay. Do you have any sort of... Magical ceiling climbing abilities? Because... Pitons. She's got those pitons. You said it was a natural cave, which implies that the surface is rough and can be gripped by crocodile claws. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's rough, but there's uh, it's kind of damp, you know. There's kind of it's yeah yeah okay. I'll, I'll you can roll you can roll to climb up. Okay. I also don't have to be very far up. I don't even know where that was. Okay, re-rolling the dice. I don't have to be very far up. I just don't want to be at eye level. Like, I don't want to be standing in the uh, room uh. being like, hi, how are you? I'm Olive. <laughs> like, I want to be above their, sure. their sight. I mean, I will say that there's enough rubble around that you could kind of hunker down and conceal yourself if anyone is to enter. It might be a little more sensible, but you can climb up as well. 16, just to try to get above head level. Don't have to get very high. Just yeah. want to be out of eye range yeah okay you successfully do that there's a non there's a non-natural door jam above where you came in it's been retrofitted and you managed to get up there and it's actually in shadow um so difficult to see you um having said that you do know that goblins have night vision but um you feel oh yeah yeah no the the point isn't to be invisible it's to not be the first thing they see because they're only going to have a second in this room cool (laughs) before i kick them in the face and I, at this point, I'm doing my little investigation, but I only get a total of five, and I'm staring and trying to figure things out, but everything is very confusing here. Maybe it's the rag over my face. I'm not used to that. Yeah, yeah. You find that kind of difficult. Um, so, yeah. Hide. Oh, I'm, I definitely hide it. I did my stealth successfully. It's just a matter of, it's, it's the other thing. It was the trying to determine what was going on. I'm still a little confused. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, you, you can tell that there are um, children in that nearest one to the right. It looks like there's someone in the next one on that side, in, let's say, uh, yeah, the, in the middle cell on the right. Um, you can't tell what's in the far cell on the right. And on the left, yeah, you can tell that the nearest one on the left, the first one on the left, is empty. Okay. This sounds like something we can do right now. I'm wondering, and this is just an interpretation... I have the spell Skywrite. I'm familiar. I would like to Skywrite in the roof of the cell where the children are. Oh, mm-hmm. no. And it's line of sight. Children are bad actors. And I want to tell them it's going to be okay. We're going to rescue you. We're going to rescue oh, you. Be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I'll be a less <clears throat> verbose. And it'll just say, keep quiet. Help is coming. Okay, the, the two kids cower at first when they see these, uh, these magical cloudy letters appearing in front of them, wisps of smoke, and they just, uh, yeah, keep quiet, help is coming. And they give you a nod, and they kind of, you know, one of them kind of, the bigger one hugs the little one a little closer. Um, yeah. So this can go on for an hour, and then I say, is there any danger? So much danger. Oh. Point to any danger. So much danger. So many goblins. I love it using the skyrate to communicate with the prisoners to let us know. Oh, you can change that. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, validate that. I'm not 1000% sure, but I'm pretty sure it lasts as long as I concentrate. So I'm going to make sure I can change skyrate. So I'm looking that up right now. Very clever. If children can read. <laughs> Sometimes they're like five and then it's not as good, but. Uh, no, uh, well, at least the older kid appears to have understood the first message. Ooh. And, you know, I'm going to say for the purpose of this thing, as you're doing a scaled-down version of it, you could put any extra energy that you would need into the size, into communicating. Yeah, and you can write another simple message. And the simple message is point to where there's danger. Yeah. Um, so, uh, he, well, he kind of crawls over and he's like, uh, I don't think there's anybody here who can hear us, so I, can, I, I think it's okay to talk. No, uh, no, child, no. <laughs> and then I, I say back in my cutest whisper, it's going to be okay. Are there any traps? I don't know. There's a very mean, uh, pompous, self-absorbed man in the cell beside me. And then in the next cell, there is a scary mutant. <laughs> That's good to know. You did good. Okay. Shh. Okay. I look over at my friend Olive, and I, I start to do hand signals. And as I'm doing the hand signals, I say... There's a bad guy in one of the cells. <laughs> talking. Uh, yes, we know they're a jerk. Please don't talk. Surprise rounds. Very, very unlikely of talking. As you're saying this, a, a voice pipes in. <clears throat> Using Skyrite indoors. Well, now I really have seen it all. What is this? Some sort of a rescue mission? Please uh, be quiet, sir. We don't have keys. <laughs> a voice coming from the, the middle cell. 
You don't have keys or maybe a knock spell? Come on, I've been in here. I've been in here close to 24 hours. I, I need to get back to my, my apothecary. What's your name? <clears throat> my name is Percival Meniscus. And he kind of, he's looking around as if, of course you've heard of me. Oh, Percy, we're here to get you out of here. Wonderful, wonderful, yes. Well, um, there's, a, there's a lever at the end of the row here, although I believe it will open all of the, all of the, the cells on this side. And, uh, this, tell uh, me about the mutant in there. What, what can you tell me about well, the mutant? Well, you can have a look for yourself. He's, um, and then you can see there's this, like, I don't know, you remember the Cronenberg episode of Rick and Morty? There's, like, this, like, <laughs> just monstrous kind of beast kind of lurch, lurching about. Uh, you see a little, like, uh, a mouse dart into the cell, and there's this, like, whoosh, it spits out acid that just like melts melts the uh. mouse and then like some appendage flies out of somewhere like a frog's tongue just takes it and uh and devours it and like there's just drips of goo coming off this thing and then it shuffles back into a little corner going is that flimby or percy uh, well, i am percy ah uh, that's flimby then i this this is not uh Flimby Decanto. I, I mean, I. As for last, I heard he moved on to a different uh, village uh, because he didn't like playing second fiddle to me as second best potion maker in Nimbin. That's what I heard, anyway. Did he ransack his own store before, before moving? Is that typical around here on moving day? Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. I do know that my own apothecary is ransacked by these goblins. Um. You know, you think you can trust someone and then, well, I, look, all I'll say. As Olive is having this lovely conversation, I cast Mage Hand uh, after I get within 30 feet of the lever and oh, I no, try no, to no, pull no, no. the lever with with my Mage Hand. You're going to make Flimby fight us. Okay. Uh, oh. You succeed. Uh, you oh, open no. it. And, and uh, I cast Minor Illusion into the jail cell where the m mutant is to try to distract it. I use a visual illusion of a very nice penguin waddling around in there. <laughs> okay, um, you, you conjure this penguin as uh, Percy kind of stretches his legs and, you know, steps out grand grandiosely and is like brushing himself off. Um, this penguin uh, appears in this cell, and at first uh, the little Cronenberg mutant goes, rawr, rawr, and he jumps back, and he carries a bit, and then he spits a bit of acid on it, and it goes through, and he investigates it. He realizes it's not a threat, and then he quickly shuffles out of the cell, and then... <laughs> Did fire, the fi children react to get out of the cell before? Because I think I can keep the mage hand, or cast the mage hand again to pull it if everybody gets out of the cell. The children are still cowering, but what you see happen is that the mutant shuffles over across to the opposite cell where there's another mutant, and he fires acid at that um, at, at the lock there. Um, at which point, the other mutant kind of like grabs the door a bit, manages to slide through, and they both kind of like uh, just start embracing. And suddenly, it looks like two mutants become one as they're just tendrils and tentacles, and goo is intertwining. And uh, you could swear you see one of them shedding a tear as they embrace. Aww, that's lovely. Uh, I tell the children, come with us now and run. Okay. Don't uh, make any noise. Uh, they do that. Um, they start making their way um, out where you came in. Uh, yes. Unmasked towards oh, the... Oh, I cover their sleep. faces as they come by me. Okay. Um, and Dr. Crud is still out there, is he? Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're like, please, sir, which way should we go out this way? And are they I talking to Dr. Crud or are they talking uh, to me? They're talking to you. They're like, oh, I just want to see, we just want to see Papa again. Cover your faces and oh. there's a doctor right outside. Just oh. cover your faces with this cloth. Make sure it's a little wet. Keep it wet. Lick it if you need to oh. and run and spit in it. Spit in it if you oh. need to and then just run. Papa run said, through. Papa says not to spit, but okay, strange man. No, it's important to spit right now because you want to make it cloth wet and keep it wet. Okay. And then just run there and there's going to be a doctor and he's going to take care of you. Don't go near the gargoyle. Stay to the, and I tell left oh. or right, whatever's appropriate there. Okay. Okay, and they, they skip out towards uh, Dr. Crud. Dr. Crud, you see these two uh, kids in um, uh, nice but filthy clothes, um, and they've got uh, spit all uh, dribbling out of their faces. As 
Do you? Wait, who? Yeah, yeah. You're also drooling on Crubbly. So much drooling. That's true for two hours. I am still above the door jam. Cool. Um, yeah, they are uh, terrified by you at first, Dr. Crud. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Ah, ah, ah. One of them, uh, one of them uh, faints into, the smaller one faints into the other one's arms. Please don't hurt me, giant elephant man. Oh, come on now. Can't you all take a joke? What's going on? Who are you? <gasps> oh, such a friendly voice. Uh, my name is uh, Neville. And this is Gary, uh, and and we, we live in the village, and these goblins, they took us. They took us away from Papa. Oh, well, well they come on, we, come on. My carriage is right down the hill here. We're going to get you all set up. You're going to be all nice and safe in there. Cool, yeah, uh, they follow you. Um, are you going to put them in a little pocket dimension, or what's the plan? Yeah, I'm going to put them in the medical bed, let them be attended to by my nurses. Let them uh, pet the newborn kitties. Cool. And I'm telling Pompous Percy to move his ass and get out the door and follow the kids and put this mask on. Very and if he doesn't real. like Pompous Percy, I'm going to shoot him in the butt with a light spell. Uh, uh, oh, my the, gosh. The indignity of it all. Never in my life. Uh, mm. Before I leave, um, one thing I should say. Um, all speeches are given outside, but go ahead. If you if you do come across uh, that blackguard, Flimby DeCanto, don't believe a word he says. The man cannot be trusted. He's unhinged. He's, I don't know, he's spent too much time around his own potions, I think, and it's affected his mind. So if he, anything he says, especially anything he says about me, barefaced lies, barefaced lies, but. I have taken the note, Percy did something bad to Flimby. <laughs> That's the note I took, too. Oh, look at that, we're thinking alike, Olive. <laughs> price gouging, price, there's no laws against it, but if, if you're going to provide a certain product, you, you need to charge the right amount for it. Otherwise, he, he doesn't understand anything about economics is the problem, you know? <laughs> It's in the, she's all, all, he's too concerned with quality, all quality of my reputation. I said, you've got to move units. One must move units. Compete. All right. I figured out why the potions stopped working as they intended to work. Percy sabotaged Flimby, I think to myself, above the door jam. Did Percy move his butt or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, he did. He did. He, he, he did kind of like, you know, he pulled his cloak very dramatically around himself and, and marched out. And he's, you know, he's covering cover, cover his face. Good. He, he covered his face. He knows what's up. Um, right. Yeah. And then these like these uh, little mutant guys are like, um, yeah, shuffling kind of like, well, I want to say hand in hand, but appendage in appendage. And they kind of just want to get back. They want to get past you and leave. And they're giving these kind of like <laughs> kind of puppy dog eye, but on the end of a stalk. <laughs> Puppy dog eyes, but on the end of a stalk. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they if you're not going to stop them, they'll, they'll shuffle out. Um, and then uh, you notice that in the middle cell on the left, uh, there's a pile of stuff. Um, it looks like things that have been uh, stolen. There's various discarded pairs of boots, uh, some fine gnomish workwear, including a leather apron and gloves, uh, clothes of varying styles. Uh, just general stuff that prisoners would maybe have taken off them. Um, you also find uh, a spell scroll and some magical looking boots. I don't, because I'm still above the door jam. Okay, anyone who searches will easily find those things. Well, I would like very much to use Mage Hand again. Sure. Unless that would drain me too much and use that to grab the spell scroll uh, through, yeah. the, through the boss. Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Can I decipher what the spell scroll is? Is it a cleric spell or a druid spell or is it a potentially a wizard spell? I think it's one you have. It's a scroll of mage armor, so I think you can use it. Oh, lovely. I might convert that to my spell book. That would be good. Excellent. Oh, yeah. You could, you, you could transcribe that, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, well, I'm not going to do it right now, but I like the thinking. I do think at this point we have successfully done quite a bit of what we set out to do. Um, and the mutants left. They didn't cause any ruckus or challenge us or fight. That was kind of what I was prepared for. And when they didn't, I used the mage mage hand. No, they seemed peaceful. Oh, well, I'm going to push the lever back up and put the cells closed again. Okay, the cells close. Nice. I think we got more to do. I'm going to put my face mask back on and run back to the doctor and wave him through. If Dr. Crud III has put the children in the hospital ward and maybe like... Percy, out of a sense of self-preservation, could drive the cart back to town. 
or at least escort the children. It seems safe on the road, comparatively speaking, during the day. Uh, he reluctantly agrees that he will bring the kids back, but uh, he claims he doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to pilot a cart. Well, that's okay. I ain't gonna let you drive my stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It would be a travesty to put these hands to such menial work. Oh, hey, uh, you look a little peckish. Here, have, drink this. And he hands him over a glass. <laughs> Excuse me? Pompous. <laughs> Pompous Percy. I love Pompous Percy. He's so lovely. Uh, he looks at this eight-foot elephant drooling uncontrollably, handing him a potion. He's like, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, it, it, it's, it's not for my drill. Go ahead. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take put the pep right back in your step, and I want to do a persuasion check for this one. Okay, you can. Uh, this is one of your mystery potions, yeah? Yeah. Okay, can you also oh roll, roll persuasion check then? Okay. Okay, that's going to be an 18 plus 4. 22. Okay, I'm also going to roll a check to see if he can identify what it is. Well, that's fair. Ooh, he got a four. <laughs> can you roll a D hundred, D one hundred, please, to see what this actually is like? I sure can. Oh yes, a potion of vitality. Oh, marvelous! This is exactly what I need. Uh, that's a seventy-five. Seventy-five. Okay. Oh, we've so had that one. Oh, this is exciting. We had seventy-four, I think. Oh, the egg was seventy-four. Darn. I wanted to see him lay an egg. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he knocks back this potion. He's like, hmm. Interesting mouthfeel. <laughs> Spicy on the palate. <laughs> kind of an oaky after. <laughs> he falls limply to the ground um, and boom, uh, a ghostly apparition of him rises up above. He's like, oh, what, what was in that? I, oh, bugger. Oh, my word. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So he's now incorporeal and his body is lying there on the floor. And he's like, well, great. I've got about an hour of this, and he just uh, he just um, he phases through the 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 bars in the jail again and sits back down to where he was before on the floor and just starts like inspecting his fingernails. Oh, he floated Better. back into the cave, back into the jail. Uh, yeah. Hey, oh wait, hey, he was outside the jail. Hey, no, he yeah. just sits down. He, he just sits down. He's back in the yeah. jail cell. He's sure. back in the jail cell. Okay, Olive whispers to him. I notice that you're a little incorporeal right now. Can hmm. you please float through the wall? And peek out of it every now and then and look down the hallway and see where the goblins are? Well, you could have just asked me where the goblins are. I, I, I know all this information already, of course. I'm very observant. You're now. so observant and so yes. wonderful. Float yes. down that hallway and find out where Gabo whatever his face is. Night face. Well, I, I, think, <laughs> I think you're outside. Yeah, I think you're outside and you went in corporeal. Uh, uh, you were with Dr. Crud, right? So you weren't in the jail cell. I think we should rewind that a bit and just clarify. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's just outside, but it's not far. He could still do that. Um, I'm going to need another persuasion check, though, because this guy is not a helpful sort. <laughs> oh, okay. He might not. No, he, he, he's a bit, he's of, a an bit of a jerk. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm, you used more colorful language than Just I to did. be clear, his, his corporeal body is lying there lifeless on the ground. A non-natural one. Okay. Can you please go down the hallway for me? Do I look like your dog's body? Do I look like a scout? No, I am Percival Meniscus. My name rings out through the, the, the country of Guasso. Look, I can give you information. I know what's going on. <sighs> um, Mr. Nightface, uh, we're, we are on first name terms, myself and Garbo. Um, he uh, is in his throne room beyond. Um, he's probably sleeping. He does, um, he does like to sleep late after a long night of uh, jittering and self-aggrandizing and uh, plotting world domination. Um, so he's probably asleep in his throne. Um, I would imagine his two uh, pets, his two cave squigs, are also there. And then uh, there was a... a, a a few, a few of the the boys left early, uh, last night and never came back. So, I would estimate that there are probably only two or three other goblins in there, and then uh, there's also um, um, another room that you don't need to go near. It's probably I wouldn't bother. There's like, um, uh, I think they're brewing up uh, goblin beer or something like that. Just ignore that room. Um, uh, yes, that's pretty much all you need to know. I'm hearing a lot of maybes and kindas, and you're not real sure. So why don't you just get your butt in there and take a look, gander around? Or do you want me to give oh. you another potion? 
Is Dr. Crud in the room with the jail cell with me? Because I'm still above oh, the... We had just no, no, this is out of the atrium. Outside. Okay, well yeah. then I can't communicate. Uh, uh, roll persuasion, please, Dr. Crud. Absolutely. I think you should be rolling intimidation. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, intimidation, sure. Whichever you like, whichever you like. Uh, I, I will stick with uh, persuasion because that's my strength. <laughs> uh, 18 sure. plus 4, 22. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he kind of assesses the situation and realizes that he can't touch you and you can do what you want to his lifeless body. And he sees the size of you. He's like, oh, very well. Okay. And uh, yeah, he floats in. He's uh, gone for a while. He's gone for another while. And then he comes back out and he's like, <clears throat> as I said, um, Gobbo fast asleep, uh, two squigs snoring by his side. And two other goblins asleep at the foot of the steps that lead up to the throne. <sighs> How about it? That's it. All of them? That's all of yes. them? Oh, there. Also, if um, goblins are not honest creatures, if, if, if Mr. Nightface <laughs> tries to suggest that he and I were in some sort of a, a business agreement, a pact together, that's bad. I don't believe him. My theory is he's in league with, with Flimby. That's my theory on it, and even though they would both deny that. Insight both, check. Both lies. Yes, it, go for it. It's a 14 plus 5. Yeah, he is full of it. That is all lies. Uh, what? Uh, no, you, you believe him about the kind of setup of everything, but the, where he's telling you that he didn't make a pact with Mr. with Gobble Nightface, not true. Um, uh, all right, buddy. Well, you know what? Uh, now that we've arrived at this this junction... Uh, we, I don't need you to take the kids into town. They'll be fine with the nurses in the wagon. Uh, I'm going to be tying up your body. So when you become corporeal again, you're going to be, uh, you got some stuff to answer for. Oh, no, please don't do that. I'm calling me a liar. Absolutely. <laughs> Very well, then. Uh, uh, uh. He, he's resigned. He just sits there on the ground. Justice will be served. I am confident of that. Uh, while this uh, doubt... <laughs> New York. I'm going to go ahead and go through all the stuff that's in the cell since I'm just hanging out here. I'm going to be very, very quiet. But I open the cell again. I slip in. I check everything out. And I use a spell slot to determine with my detect magic if there's anything else magical besides the spell scroll I pulled out. Uh, yeah, you find a pair of boots of false tracks. Oh, I love those. And um, Detect Magic uh, will tell you that basically, yeah, um, these will fit any humanoid. And when wearing them, you can uh, decide that they will make the tracks of any other humanoid that you like rather than your own tracks. How vogue are they? Are they in vogue? Are they pretty? Are they nice? Are there something I should wear? They are magnificent. Um, they're magical oh, I'm wearing boots. them then. Yeah, when you, them. when you put them on, they reshape to the, to the shape and size of each of your feet. And they're the most comfortable boots you've ever worn. I'm being very quiet, but I'm showing them off to Olive. I'm showing her how pretty I look in them. Uh, <laughs> and I, I keep doing it until she reacts. I have a smile on my crocodile face. <laughs> okay. And I make, uh, make, oh, you said humanoid, right? Yeah. Uh, any size humanoid? Um, uh, no more than one size bigger than your own, I think. Or does okay, it so... I don't think so, it says uh, troll. Troll should be about right. Uh, let me just check what it says because I think a troll will no be worries. twice your size. But I think I'm—I think I'm making up that stipulation. It doesn't actually say it on these. Um, these are from Xanathar's guide. No, uh, take it. Oh, it has to be humanoid of your size. Oh, of my yeah, size. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll try to think of something that's frightening of my size. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. A, a devourer. What's the devourer? Hobbit? Uh, intellect devourer. Okay. Oh, gosh. Wow. They've got some distinctive tracks. Yes, they do. And I um, think they're kind of small. Yeah? Uh, pardon me for sticking my oar in, but haven't you got some goblins to be slaying? Well, we don't know if we're going to slay them. But yeah, thanks for weighing in. <laughs> we're moving forward right now after I collected the things that looked of value or smart that wouldn't weigh me down, that are magical. I think I got the Mage Armor spell right now. I might have to use that, just saying it. And I start moving forward, and I wave at Olive as I go. 
and I hope that I can get eye contact with my good friend, the Elephant Man, Dr. Crud, and see if I can wave him down to join us. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I should uh, roll stealth, see if I can sneak my way in there like my, my friends. Cover your face. You can just walk to us, because I'm in the room beyond you, right? Well, then that's a perfect waste of an 18. Thank you. I think you <laughs> stealthed down here beautifully. I'm going to compliment you on your stealth, and I point out my funny tracks that I'm leaving. Well, it's actually 17 with a minus one, but... Uh... Still lovely. And with that, you also managed to stealthily uh, uh, put your trunk inside of your clothing so that you don't inhale any of this uh, sleep fungus. One presumes. So brilliant. Yeah, I, I don't need a mask. I just put my trunk inside my clothes, and I smell pretty, so I ain't worried about it. <laughs> well, I'm going to sneak down and see what I can see. Uh, it looks like right now we're looking for that room that we were told not ooh, to look ooh, for. Oh, you're passing under the doorway that Olive is in? Well, yeah. Okay, well, Do you want then... me to yell and get everybody awake and have them come out so you can... You can jump them? No, no. If you try to walk underneath me, I'm going to abandon my post and again take up the front of the party. Okay. Okay, so marching order is Olive, followed by Tangible. Sure. Elephant Man, by... you want to be in front, Mr. Crud? Mr. Handsome Boy with the big trunk? I, I, I'll go wherever you want. Uh, apparently, they don't, I'm not allowed to be in the front, even though, you know, I'm the one with the chain mail. I know, you got a way better AC than me. You should be in front. I think I got a better AC than everybody, but apparently I'm not allowed to be in the front. Crocodile. No, no, no. I'm going to get behind you and push you gently from behind, not touching anything inappropriate. Oh, oh, oh we're getting the we're getting the carry on sign. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're going. With a natural 20, I'd like to head straight for the room that I was told not to go in. Okay. And I'm following. Um you do that. Yeah. At the end of the jail cell is a tunnel that curves around and leads you to this vast ancient dwarven throne room, which has been carved into the mountain. No, 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 not the throne room. The room that contained, quote, brewing supplies. Oh, uh, that is, you have to go through the throne room to get to that. Oh, so that's where we're going. Let's do it. Well, with my natural 20, I try to sneak past the sleeping everything. Oh, oh, I misunderstood. My bad. Okay, yes. Um, if, yeah. if that's possible. I'm just okay. I'm sneaking. So are, so are yes, we all you... rolling stealth? <laughs> no, don't come. I, I, hold out, I hold up both palms facing away from myself and say stop in sign language. Stop. And I try to sneak my way into that room back there. Okay, so you got a 20 on stealth. Natural 20. Yeah, okay. So Plus four. Or plus, yeah, plus four. 24. Beautiful. So as I say, yeah, you find yourself in this uh, vast ancient dwarven throne room. You're kind of, it's breathtakingly beautiful and grand. Um, there are these four gigantic columns stretching up to the ceiling. They flank this staircase. At the bottom of the staircase, indeed, are two sleeping little goblins. And on top of the staircase is this magnificent ancient dwarven throne with a, um, a, a goblin asleep in it. Um, he's wearing this, like, black robe with these, like, uh, um, yellow grinning crescent moons all over it and he's a, a staff nearby with the same same device atop it um either side of him is a cage there are two cages with um these um yeah cave squigs and uh, these small blood red bipedal creatures that resemble fleshy balls of muscle with legs and a maw of razor sharp teeth they're like pockmarked all over them they're covered in warts and there's saliva dribbling out of their huge mouths uh, everybody is snoring to some degree as you cartoonishly tiptoe uh, past them. Uh, thankfully, it's pretty easy to see where the entrance is to this room they were talking about, and it doesn't really go very close by them, so you, you manage to stealth by pretty easily. Um, whereupon, uh, as you approach, you can hear loud kind of bubbling noises, steam being released, uh, that type of thing, and you find yourself in yet another cavern. Um, it's around 80 feet long and 30 feet wide, um, there's kind of rubble and crates at the entrance, uh, and they give way, give, give way to this makeshift apothecary's laboratory, which consists of um, two large banquet tables, one on either side of the room, repurposed as lab tables. Um, they're covered in all sorts of lab equipment. There's beakers, flasks, condensers, bubbling cauldrons, bunches of herbs, piles of vibrantly colored pow powder, and so on. And in the middle of the cavern, you see a dejected-looking gnome. He's chained by the waist to the arm of this makeshift kind of wooden crane which lurches above him 
as he as he moves around he's kind of muttering kind of sadly to himself as he's shuffling between the tables you know pouring one potion into another sniffing one throwing one away um but he's chained up he can't leave the room and he's dressed in these filthy rags and he looks malnourished but um he's diligently at work nonetheless okay i hold up one finger to my mouth and i say nothing i'd like to get a big pot of boiling potion Mm -hmm. and like combine a whole bunch of potions together and then sneak back out to the throne room and splash it on the king okay like cover the king in boiling hot potion (laughs) You managed to communicate this to uh, to the... To... No, no, I just hold up one finger and then I do it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, well, you go over to pick up a cauldron and he, he's like, no, 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 he gives you a no. And uh, he, from behind his rags, uh, he pulls out this uh, silvery looking potion and he looks at, at the goblin and he gives you kind of a nod and like a pour this on him kind of thing. Oh, okay. I accept that from the person and yeah. I pour that on him instead. Okay. In his mouth, if I can, I'm being super sneaky from behind the throne. I reach up one arm and I like squint over the throne to see where I'm pouring. And I try to get the drops into his snoring mouth. Okay. Um, As you do so, he's, 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 he's snoring away. (laughs) And on the next, that is so cute. His disgusting goblin mouth full of these spiky broken yellow gnarled teeth one of them poking poking through one of his lips he managed to dribble the potion it's in his entirety into his throat <laughs> and he wakes up he's like <laughs> and he looks at you and he grabs his staff and it starts like vibrating i'm gonna hide behind the throne okay uh, then he <laughs> he looks around for anyone uh, as his staff starts vibrating with magical energy and he's pointing a, a gnarled uh, clawed finger and and then you see all the veins the dark green veins on his arms and in his face like rising up to the surface of the skin as he just starts vibrating and his head explodes and um, as it does so it wakes up the squigs in the cave in the cages who start like jumping up and down and the the, the cages are like broken washing machines one of them falls off the edge of the platform the two goblins at the bottom of the of the of the steps jump up Spears in hand. Uh, they look around. They all they see is their leader uh, exploded on the ground, and they look at each other and start going and celebrating and dancing around. What would you like to do? Remain hidden behind the throne and see what my friends do, <laughs> and just like see what's what's going on. <laughs> well, I stand up at this point from my hidey hole. Uh, still behind my very tall friend who's hiding in front of me. And I say, uh, the king is dead. You should all evacuate so you don't become dead as well. And we will take care of everything from here. And I say that in Orkish. Okay. You say that we can go? You are free to go. Oh. <laughs> One of them runs up and quickly loots uh, their boss's body. And they're like, uh, thank you all. And uh, they start making their way out uh, via the the way you all came in. Drop it. Oh. Drop it. Oh, okay. You get to keep your life, but you can't keep the stuff you just took. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He drops it, and they kind of like, you know, looking a bit, looking a bit uh, uh, dejected, make their way out less enthusiastically. Um, from the uh, from the laboratory area, you hear a. Just over the kind of the bubbling of the condensers and, and stuff, you say, um, p- p- "Pardon me, uh, could I could I trouble you? Um, could somebody please uh, release me from these bonds?" <laughs> this chain I is... search the body of oh, the yeah. blown up head guy to see if I can find the keys both and run us... over there and do that. Yeah, yeah. Both of us have no qualms. Like for three people, one of whom's a pacifist and two of whom don't mind killing. Like none of us mind just digging around, rifling through exploded heads pockets. <laughs> cool. Um well whoever's doing that, please uh roll me one D twelve each. Sure. Can we get I in on this? T- how how exploded is this body? Can yeah, <laughs> uh, everyone everyone can get in on it. Yeah. Right. Uh you rolled a two. I rolled a two. Yes I did. Okay. Ten. Uh you find uh two vials of blood. Oh, it's disgusting. Uh that's I'll a ten that from Olive? Bread. Yeah. Uh, you find a black onyx stone. Um, it looks like it's worth a lot. 
Cool. Do I also? We find keys, right? Uh, you find all the keys, yeah. Okay. And I grab that staff if it didn't blow up with him. Uh, yeah, you grab the staff. I would like to instantaneously uh, use a spell called mm -hmm. uh, Identify. Uh, okay, um, this is a, um, a cursed staff of Witch Bolt. I will throw it down. Okay, you do so. Never <laughs> using it. Not going to use it. Nope. And Dr. Crud, did you roll to uh, seven. loot the... You got a seven. Um, uh, yeah, what you, all you have, all that remains um, is uh, his black robes, uh, which are kind of, uh, yeah, have been sort of blown up a bit. There's, there's nothing really left. I will cast Identify and look around the room and see if there's anything. I'm sorry, magic, uh, detect magic, because I got one slot left. Detect magic. Um, you, 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 there's, there's, there's nothing magical in the room. Uh, although what I will say is that um, when you do cast this, you just get this like blanket kind of hum of magic um uh Dwarves, which they're which, amazing which reminds you uh that from your history lessons uh you're sure that you heard something about this area of the mountains um like there was a big there was a big mage battle here many years ago and um uh you know part of the reason that it's it's such a good place for uh, growing potion um potion ingredients and stuff and supplies is because the, the earth is kind of imbued with a very low level of magic here. So you do you get this kind of like glow of magic everywhere. That's so cool. Olive takes the keys and, and goes over to the chained up rag wearing Flimby. It's Flimby, Flimby? little Flimby DeCanto. He's like, oh, oh, thank you so much. And you see now that the, that the chain, the chain was tied tight around his, his waist, sitting on his, uh, sitting on his hips and it's kind of dug into him and stuff. And he's, He's got infections and he hasn't he hasn't eaten enough, but he, he seems in a chipper mood. He's like, oh, thank goodness that ordeal is over. Ah, oh, my word. I, I, can't, I, think, I, can't, I can't thank you enough for, for rescuing me. I definitely direct him to Dr. Crud the Third. I'm like, Dr. Crud the Third, look at his chain lesions. <laughs> oh, I'll take care of that. I'm also going to take this goblin body because you do know that goblins are uh, universal donors. You can use their parts for anybody. <laughs> oh. There's not a huge amount in the way of intact organs, but you find what you think might be a spleen um, and maybe a kidney, but it could be a bit of liver. Oh, look at this spleen and this kidney, maybe liver. I'm sure somebody could use this. It, uh, the, um, if there's a gallbladder intact, um, I can use that in, uh, in various potions. It's a, a little macabre using goblin pieces, but... When they were your jailers and captors, um, uh, I, I don't feel so bad about that. Well, you can just keep it for a trophy. That would be fine with us. <laughs> now, this is a living being, people. This is... It's wrong with tangible. <laughs> this, this is a living being. We don't... No, we don't do that. I don't think it's living anymore. I think oh, it's no. dead. Well, it I mean, was. I did kill a person. So if we're going to... Like, I, Flimby, Flimby and me both 50% committed a murder. <laughs> so. well, I saw everything and actually you 100% are the cause of it. When you give someone a potion and someone becomes ethereal, it's not murder. But when I give someone a potion and their head explodes, it's murder. I see how it is. <laughs> well, no, because he's going back to his body. He's not right. dead. Who, who did you uh, give a potion of etherealness to? Percy the pompous jerk. Oh, yeah. oh, that guy is uh, tied up outside, and we know he was in cahoots with this goon face guy, even though he lied to us about it. No. So, yeah, night face, right? Yeah. Yeah, but Percy would never do something like that. I mean, we've had our, we've had our differences, but we're 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 contemporaries, we're colleagues. We, I I I, I refuse to believe that he had hand in, in my in my capture. Well, you know what? We'll let the courts decide. We're, he's a, he's arrested. Or he, he's going to go through the justice system oh, and oh no. everything like that. All well, I know I'm... is he's a big, fat liar. Right. He told us not to go where you were what? and to stay away from that room. So we are pretty sure he was in cahoots with whoever was doing this. The train conductor, the mastermind behind it all. <laughs> Quite possibly. It's a, it's a, it's a, it could be fake news, but we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Never speak the name of the train conductor in these parts. No, he doesn't say that. <laughs> I knew it. I told all of y'all. Um, yeah, so with that, you unchain him. Um, I presume you heal the guy up. Um, he's still incredulous that um, his trusted uh, colleague and confidant um, could have could have stitched him up like this. 
Um, but he's just happy to be free. And um, yeah, he's he's horrified to learn that uh, the creations he's being forced to make might have been fed to poor, unfortunate children. Uh, you tell him all about the the mutants who you managed to catch up with, and these are these are uh, these are goblins that he thinks he can um, he can restore um, either through a mage friend with a restore spell, or he can brew up some potions. And um, yeah, um, well, Percy's Percy's right outside. So as soon as we get outside and we, see, I go out in front ahead of everybody else. And I start letting Percy know that you have that he we have determined everything that happened, and it's in his best interest to cop to what's going on, and that the Goblin Gobbo is dead. Before Flimby gets outside, I make yeah. another hand motion to be like, "Stay in the cave just for a second, and I join you, and I assist you in your pressuring of him, and I say, "Flimby was dead when we got there." Wait, no, I'd have to make a deception check if I did that. Right, deception. That's what I was going to go with, too. It'll be a low DC, because it's quite plausible. Okay, I'm going to try to lie. I'm really bad at lying. <laughs> so are you going to help me lie? How is this working? Because that's what I was going to do. Yeah, I'm going to assist you in lying, because I myself am... So I get to roll two dice and take the higher of the two? Is that correct, Mr. DM? Correct. Okay. Oh, thank goodness, because me lying is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, so I got an 11. Oh, no. <laughs> to uh, to sell this. Oh, can I bring out a piece of, like, the way that I assisted him was I brought out a brain or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the DC was 10. I succeeded. Uh, he sees that and his, like, his, his face turns white. He's ashen and he falls to his corporeal knee, his incorporeal knees. Incorporeal? Knees. Incorporeal. <laughs> And he just breaks down and he, he admits it all. He's like, oh, I never meant it to happen like this. I simply, I just, I, I needed to make a living. I needed to prove how good I am. And that, that Flimby, he doesn't even try. It just comes to him naturally. He just throws things together. Who cares if your potions are, are well well concentrated? It, it, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. I don't, why do people want his potions and not mine? I'm a bad, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. You engage in children, and you're going to have to face the consequences for that. <laughs> no. That, I'm going to say, but I don't think anybody's bad. I think they make really dumb choices sometimes, and you made one here out of greed, and that's sad on you. But you're going to have to face the consequences, and we're going to bring him out now, and we're all going to go back to town. And I would carry your body, but I'm going to let him do it, because he's probably stronger than I am. Would you like to represent me in court? Sounds like... Got away with words. <laughs> Tangible, the corrupt lawyer gnome. <laughs> all, all that stuff you said about no, no bad people. I, I like that. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure why you think I'm corrupt, but I think <laughs> there's a elegance to the universe that provides life and death, and that's what we live with. Uh, and it is a reality. It's probably more karma related than you're used to, but it's fine. Uh, Everybody has their own set of beliefs. You're making a lot of sense right now. Just just say that to the to the magistrate. We'll have a conversation. It will be good. You and I you and I should make a deal. I don't know if I'm going to change my wizarding ways to become a lawyer, but <laughs> I I think I can see where that would come in possible. Maybe we could get my cousin Vinny. He's very good at these things. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Let's talk. That was Let's lost talk. on all of you. I see. Okay. No, no, I've, I've, I've heard of a, I've heard of a, 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 a barrister named Vinny who, who frequents these parts. A small, <laughs> a small fellow, colorful, colorful accent. Yeah, short, yeah, yeah. His, his girlfriend's really tall. Yeah. Yeah, let me hear. He kind of old. Oh, speaks like oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Yes, you I know. know Vinny. I know Vinny. Yeah. Yes. While this entire conversation happens dr crud's back there with with the other guy and uh he shotguns those last two potions dr crud does yep <laughs> i told you we were getting through them all oh oh okay. no oh, okay that might be the end of dr crud the character <laughs> death foreshadowing must be achieved <laughs> Just to let you know, I am not, this is um, a D100's potion table that I found. I've not read through it, um, and I've not, I've not altered any of these. Um, oh, that's fine. I got an egg out of it so far. I think some of these might be insta-kill, but um, that's the last I'll say about it. Uh, so, so you've rolled two. 
42. 42? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm just going to read this straight out. This potion is so bitter that it makes you projectile vomit profusely for 1d4 hours. You've disadvantaged on stealth checks because of all the sand, and the tracking checks against you have advantage. It can be weapon- weaponized, which, and you can treat it as an acid splash. So, yeah, you're just vomiting for 1d4 hours, and you can <laughs> so attack people with it. I'm drooling and vomiting, and, <laughs> and a 43. And you laid an egg earlier. Yeah. Mm. And you've got a little egg. <laughs> special. What else am I doing? What's the second roll? Yes. Did you roll another one? Yeah, 43. 43. Okay, um, you suffer the outward effects of being intoxicated, but your intelligence score is increased by 8 up to 20 for 1d4 hours. <laughs> Once the time is up, you recover from all effects and your intelligence reverts. So, to paint the picture, you're drooling in col- uh, profusely, like, you can't stop. You throw back one potion, you just start vomiting hot acid everywhere. Between wretches, you throw back another one. You look suddenly look like incredibly drunk but just start reciting mathematical theorems the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the opposite two sides <laughs> and that like, is correct and you become that insufferable is correct. you got that right yeah. thank you and with that you've accomplished your mission you, you bring your captor back to uh, back to Nimbin you square everything up with Ollie Ollie pays you handsomely uh as as she can because it's a it's a pretty a pretty wealthy place um you uh set flimby on his way he's got a lot of rebuilding to do and um you realize that you've just enough time to make it down for the last train all the way back to nikamui and as you hop on the train the the train conductor says oh oh you see you made it back in one piece but oh oh whoa 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 and uh sees that crud is uh, is vomiting everywhere I, I might have to ask you to uh, go get into your little dimension cart in the back there because I don't want you uh, vomiting all over my train now. Too late. I already did. Oh. All right. Well, there's a, there's a 50 gold piece soiling fee, I hope you realize. Well, well the, I'm going to have to clean that up. The, the town will take care of that. They still owe us. Big time. You're a fire-breathing kitten, are you? Yeah. Well, believe it or not, we've... We- We've got an account with, with you for specifically for soiling problems. You you wouldn't believe how, how often this is a problem. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> all right, all aboard. <laughs> well, maybe he's not as bad as guys we thought. I first thought. And with that, the as we see the train driving off into the distance, we smash cut up close to the to the uh, the train driver's face as she gives herself a, just a little hearty chuckle. <laughs> That turns from hearty chuckle into a <laughs> <laughs> the end question mark. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> that was lovely. I, I guess we lovely. need to figure out real quick before signing off what exactly is in the egg. <laughs> yes. Um. Well, you don't know yet, but for a few of these potion things, I was thinking how to do this, and it's like I might just tell your next DM. Well, so it takes a year to hatch. Hmm. So okay. you will find out at the end of the year, maybe? Or, like, I can tell you now, but I, if you really want to know, I can tell you. It's not that exciting, but I think it's cooler if you don't know. Because you wouldn't know. You can, you, can, you can bring it to experts and see if they can identify what type of egg it is. Uh, I, I think that'll be for another time. I think we're uh, out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will tell DMs, and you can get it identified <laughs> or whatever, but um, you don't know. Other than that, it'll take a year to hatch. I'm happy to say that. We'll cool. find out in the season finale. Yeah. Oh, I, w- I was going to say we should wait until January 10th, 2022 to reveal that information. And I think that would be really fun. Um, okay, I'm going to put that in my calendar right now. Yeah. Copy me. I love it. You're DMing that day. Cool. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> Joining us this time were Olive Mudo. Bye. Tangible Dreams. New York, New York, we love you. And Dr. Crud the Third. <laughs> this has been Fire Breathing Kittens. <laughs> Thank you, and goodbye. Hi, everyone. This is Brett, and I am here with Leah. Say hi, hi Leah. Hi. Hi, Leah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I should have I saw starting that coming. Out strong. And this is, I could get into this. This is the podcast where we just talk about things that we can get into, want to get people uh, interested into different things, different hobbies, different just silly stuff, and be entertaining at, at the same time, right? We'll that's try. What we're, that's what we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, moral of the story, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I have no hey. idea how to change it. Check out the oh, Rockstar rock star. Radio Podcast with host Billy Gerard. Yeah, yes, that would be me. Rockstar Radio Podcast with host Billy Gerard. This week, we've got our very own OG Jersey girl, Marie Ruffalo, in the house. And she'll be along to give us what's funny, what's new, and what's newsworthy. Rockstar. English professor Miss Drew will be along to test my public education, or lack thereof. Rockstar Radio with host Billy Gerard. Radio just too good to be free. Well, that's why we're on the podcast. I want to be a rock star. Welcome to your Eldritch Journeys. I'm BJ Haddix, and I play Bagyo Ubo, a total monk. On my journeys, I endeavor to make up for my greatest failure, one life at a time. My name is Weston, and I play Griffin, an Aarakocra swashbuckler. I seek to do what's right to quiet the echoes of my past. I'm Eddie Flynn, and I play the mad sorcerer Howland Rain. I've never really been great at being a good guy, but being a villain, on the other hand... Now that is something I could be great at. A D&D epic like none other. On Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, and more. Now quick, BJ, say a joke. <laughs> Let's take a journey.